Alright, I'm gonna see how we're gonna do this. Neither of my kids are gonna leave me alone today. That is fine. I'm having fun. Um, okay, mom. Okay. Hey, God, it's not gonna work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Derek Ofar. I'm with the Medicine Show. I discuss Igbo spirituality. If you are new to the channel, uh, which if you're here, I'm probably assuming you're not. I don't. I'm not sure YouTube recommends my stuff to new people anymore. I'm sure, if it's recommended to anybody right now. Um, so we are going to go ahead and begin the ask me anything. Um, once we get to 30, no, whoa, 30 is too much. <laughs> once we get 10 people in here, we're going to go ahead and begin. So it's not showing me who's all in here, but I already have some likes. So if you're in here, go ahead and leave a comment. If you've never uh, introduced yourself before, just let us know maybe where you're from or something, you know, let us see who is already here. Once we get 10 people, we're going to go ahead and begin. Well, as you guys see in the title, my son and I were working on this before he wanted to add this part, but it's not normally part of it. We're working on this little Lego set before I came live and I got obsessed with it. So I don't want to stop until we're 100% done. Hey, JD Bailey. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you. I don't think I've seen your name here before. So if this is your first time, hello, hello. Um, again, my name is Derek O'Fodder and I teach you both spirituality. Um, I discuss, uh, really anything esoteric, cosmic, cos uh, cosmology. My focus is not going to be very good today because, uh, my daughter is, uh, uh is not going to let me do that. So that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I, t I speak about Igbo spirituality and cosmology on here. So if this is a topic that you would be interested in, uh, go ahead and hit the, uh, subscribe button. Uh, we always have a rule in here that if you are in the live, you have to hit the like button. So right now I see we have three people here, but only one of them has hit the like button. I don't understand what that's all about, but if you have not hit that like button, the two of you who are deciding to hold on to that little like button, okay, go ahead and make it happen for us. Okay, lady, take it easy, take it easy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna see how we're gonna make this work. I have liked uh, Rosie Rose and there. Well, I see that you hit like you are a true member of the village So thank you very much for doing what needs to be done once we get ten people in here You guys can ask me anything almost anything um, uh, Primarily in the areas of spirituality and cosmology um, As these discussions are always really fun So I want to see where we go with it this time and I'm going to both try to build this Lego set and distract my daughter who is very fascinated by this right now. <laughs> Already liked and following your channel for a few years. Oh, wow. You know, whenever I hear stuff like that, I'm always really grateful for the amounts or how long a lot of you guys have been supporting this movement. So uh, for those of you who have been supporting for a very long time, thank you very much. Um, if I can think of a creative way to say thank you to you guys specifically, um, I would. So if you guys have any ideas, throw them at me. Otherwise, I'll come up with something. I feel like there's something on my chin. Okay, I'm good. All right. Do, do, do. Who else is in here? We got seven in here. If we get three more people, we're going to go ahead and begin. I don't have my Ufo, but I do have one bitter cola that we can use to break Oji. Iwaji. Thank you very much. Oh, um, while we have... Oh, we've hit 10, so I'll say that later. Do. Okay, here you go, Mama. Okay, there we go. All right, so let us go ahead and begin. What I'm going to perform is a ceremony or a ritual known as Iwaji, the breaking of the cola. And this is how you begin any uh, meeting. Uh, and if you understand our ancestral view of um, the connection with the ancestor and the ancestors and the creator, you will understand that our prayers are really meetings. They're meetings, okay? Uh, because we as a person, each individual is a meeting of many forces, a meeting of many things, all the things it takes to make you. And of course, in the beginning of the day, as you begin your day, you kick off the meeting the way you would kick off any other meeting um, in the culture. So let me go ahead and break Anji the way it is done by the ancestors and by people of presence while trying to spin this with the other hand, okay? <laughs> all right, let's go. Okikeke <sighs> rule. Ala wala, ala nemado na nemo, nene nyendo, 
Noma, Kene Dumani, Nechevani, Nenyai, and Kobala. I chose the one. But you have your life. Derek Dool, a foreign one. Boom, one for a one mamma neku. A Jimagina can make a lane. A Jimagina can make a lay. Ndieke, Ndiori, Ndiafon and Dimquo. Ndimbun and Diegad, Ndimadon and Dimmo. Nake a lay, Umo, Ajana, Umo, Papando, Eligue. Make a lay, Ndiopun and Dich. Make a lay. Ndanimo. Make a lay. Or four, make a low. Or what you come to make a leon. Utsun of four on both Sunday. I come the orchard. Whom the orchard. Who beam the orchard. Who come the orchard. Now who's on my guard the orchard. Man, I naga who's all chineke kerekaganova. Or we catch in a kajiaga. Or we catch in a kajia ma or wani. Or madam or more. He said, all right, let me go ahead and begin and try to do this Lego set. You guys can ask me any questions you guys want to ask me um, pertaining to Igbo spirituality or just stuff in general. There's all our crazy stuff going on right now, so let's see where we go with this. Um, you guys, I don't know how this is even going to work today, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know what I I don't know how this is gonna work because I have to both distract my daughter, answer questions, and uh, put this thing together. So let's see where we're at. Um, all right, we don't have any questions so far. We are eleven people deep. They want to. Those of you who haven't hit the like button, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, what are we trying to do here. Those of you who have not hit the like button, go ahead and hit the like button. Udo, Udo, I see the hearts flying. And there, well, who is all in the house, by the way? I only know JD, I only know Rosie. JD from New, New York. And there, well, one, thank you very much for your support um, throughout these years. Uh, Rosie Rose, thank you very much for your support as well. This is another Ask Me Anything from the Medicine Shell. So if you guys have questions, let me know. I don't know if this thing is frozen, it's not allowing you guys to ask. Or if you guys are just shy today. Though also the rule is if there's no questions, I'll just shut this thing off. <laughs> if there are no questions, I'll just shut this thing off. This is 100% uh, question powered. And they will, Mr. D. Greetings, great mind. Uh, thank you, okay. And they will. That one one That one All right, let's go ahead and begin. I'm trying to build this. Cr I already built this crane on, so I guess we're going. <laughs> so, hearts, yes, girl. Mama, say Obi. 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 She's not going to cooperate. If Elmo doesn't say it, she won't do it. Not, it. Hey, you, not a damn. Hey, listen, I'm not coming here to listen to myself breathe. If you guys don't have questions, I'm shutting this thing off. <laughs> You guys don't have any questions. I'm shutting this thing off. Somebody's got to hit me with something, you know? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is completely powered by you guys. Um, and it's a lot of fun, too, when we make it work. Greetings from Jax. Udo, one Udo, is Jax the, a person or Jax a place? I think Jax is a person, but maybe you can correct me. Udo, one Udo, Udo, Udo. Um, if you guys want to support this channel, the best way to do so is by joining our Patreon community. Become a part of the village at patreon.com slash the medicine shell. Um, so, oh, can I ask about the traditional medicine class? Yes, absolutely. Udo, udo, udo. So I was just about to say um, a bunch of stuff, but I'll get to the part that uh, Ogechi had just asked me about. So Ogechi is asking me about the traditional medicine class that I recently opened. So at the end of April, uh, I think it's the week of the 26th, but I could be wrong. The week of the 26th, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But it's the end of April, we are launching our very first uh, Debia class, our very first traditional healer class. Um, the class is um, is hosted by uh, Debia, uh, Wamazi, 
um, Uzo Chuku Kalo. He is a DBA practicing out of Umwahia. Um, he is also our in-house DBA for those of you who um, are on the Patreon and you've gotten like a reading from him. Uh, if you're interested in getting readings and things like that too, uh, join the Patreon. Uh, but if you've gotten a reading from him, you're going to be very familiar with him. And Uzo Chuku is in incredibly gifted by Ab, incredibly gifted by Chuku to do what he does. So together, we are putting together a traditional medicine class. Uh, the traditional medicine, ultimately, when it comes to the ancestral worldview about healing, is the fact that if you are a Debya, the knowledge will come from within you, right? So the class is, is going to teach you different things you can do to heal and cleanse and do different things. Uh, but a lot of it goes into teaching you how to find that within yourself, how to find that healing ability within April 22nd. Okay, thank you so much, Ogechi. How to find that healing ability within your own self. Um, and then how to do your healing practice in the way that our ancestors did, uh, because it is very important, right? Uh, healing is not something that the ancestors take lightly. If done wrong, um, you can, there's a lot a person can suffer from, right? Um, you, uh, <laughs> there's a reason why all these, uh, all these uh, IG oh. live uh, quote unquote healers that are cursing people up and down and doing whatever that they always go crazy after like two years. So we're going to teach you guys how to, <laughs> we're going to teach you how to do this without losing your mind. We're going to teach you how to do it and be grounded in the uh, most authentic ancestral experience possible and understanding of it. And then from there, um, helping you set up your practice. So uh, uh, building your all fall, building your, um, uh, your ag altar, building everything you need. Um, and then, of course, teaching you how to do X, Y, Z, um, how to find cures, how to know what cures what, how to put it together, how to put it together in the way that's um, the way our ancestors did, which was acknowledging sustainability, acknowledging your oneness with whatever you're using to heal um, and acknowledging the um, the 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 the, the the spiritual world, let me call it that, the spiritual world of the healing practice. So all of that is in the class. And then after that class, it, the second phase of the class or the second level, like level two of that class is an apprenticeship, an apprenticeship with the same Debia, um, where you guys, um, they're overseeing, you do your practice um, from where you're at live, and then you're able to come in and oversee them, do their own um, online live and that kind of thing. Um, and then the, the, the very end of that is a full initiation into Debia hood. Uh, so both of those kind of follow the natural traditional path that is followed by Debias at home, um, with some adjustments. So a lot of Debias at home get to like grow up around the tradition and things like that. So there's things they don't need to be taught, but of course we, we're, we know that we're in America. We don't have that around us. So we've found a way to teach it. So really that's, what's going on with the Debia class. It is available on www kedu.me that is kedu.me if somebody wants to type that in the chat i would really appreciate that um but the dbia class is available kedu.me it's filling up really fast i'm surprised by how fast it's filling up um i it's it's we also teach the Igbo language and it's like surpassing oh. the Igbo language class as far as like how many people are trying to join um so hurry up and get on there uh i think we are we're trying to have the class at about 12 people and it's like almost filled. So I might increase the number to 15 and just kind of gamble <laughs> because like one or two people won't show up anyway. Uh, it's just kind of been the nature of things. Um, so I'll probably gamble on 15, but hurry up. Cause we're about by the end of this week, we'll be at 12. Um, oh, if you need a that. payment plan, cause it's like uh, in the three hundreds, right? It's, it's in the triple digits. So if you need a payment plan, the best way to do that is go to patreon.com slash the medicine shell and join the Ezumezu tier, which is the highest mm -hmm. tier on the Patreon. And that allows you to take any Kedu class, be it the language, be it the um, traditional healing class. It allows you to take any of them at no additional cost. So you can just say, hey, Derek, put me in the next medicine class. Hey, Derek, put me in the next language class. And then I'll just plug you in and you'll be fine. So um, a few people have joined from that level too, or have joined using the Ezumezu tier. Um, and then, of course, I got to think of more benefits for the Ezumezu people, because I think that's a big-ass contribution so 
April 22nd, yes. All of that starts April 22nd, so hurry up, because like I said, it's about to fill. Is it right to worship in church and still have your own personal altar while paying reverence to my chi and my ancestors? Uh, yeah, but it's if the the evil person in you it has no problem with that, the Christian in you might. So um, I think it's because it's Christianity, you kind of have to pick a side. Um, but you as a Christian, I guess I think maybe there's room for you to be autonomous and and think for yourself or put the thing together for the way you want to put it together. It's fine. There's nothing in Odinani that says you can't, um, I guess, go, go, go to church. But there's some things in Christianity that, that, that will confuse the shit out of you, right? Like, your ancestors are not Abraham, right? <laughs> your ancestors are not Abraham, nor are they demons, nor are they whatever. So if you're able to navigate the confusion that is inbuilt in the crossover from Christianity to something else, then uh, that's kind of up to you. Um, but Christianity does kind of make you pick a side and it will make you pick its side. Uh, so there's nothing within the Igbo tradition that says that the person is, uh, you know, you're condemned for doing X, Y, Z. But once you get into that church, you'll come to find that 99.9% .9 of what we do is for some reason condemned, especially if you're a part of the Nigerian church. Um, white churches don't really have a problem with what, <laughs> with what we're doing, which I guess, whatever. Uh, but they program the Nigerian church to be that way. So that's what it is. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully you're not a part of a Nigerian church. If you're part of a Nigerian church, I'll, just, I'll literally say no. But if you go to some like, I don't know, like Lutheran, whatchamacallit in Connecticut, then yeah, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, there's things in Christianity. I'll tell you that, um, you know, that your ancestor is Abraham and uh, every the, the earth is evil. And uh, it's, 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 it's the, uh, what do they call it? The mundane world. There's another word for it. What do they call like earth in um, Christianity? Like uh, like the, the worldly, they'll say things are yeah worldly, but like everything about the world, yeah. everything feminine is bad in Christianity. Ah. Everything masculine ah. is good yeah. on a spiritual level. And it, when you deal with spirituality, Evil. there's the feminine and the masculine. masculine. Yeah. And an evil person believes in acknowledging yeah. both, ah. right? Yeah. You receive, yes, you receive from both. You were created by a mother and a father. Um, you eat from the earth, you, you, you live within the earth, you drink from water, you drink water, that kind of thing. So when I was breaking OG, I acknowledge the earth. I acknowledge the feminine elements of the world. But if you're, you know, the Christian okay. thing is going to tell you that, you know, yeah. oh, the earth is evil. You got to get out of the earth and go to heaven. You got to get all, yeah, no, this is your, your, the, the, the flesh, the body is evil. So all that stuff's going to confuse you if you try to do both. Um, but there's a lot of diasporic traditions that have found a way to navigate both Hoodoo, um, Obe, Santeria, all of them. They kind of find a way to balance both. So however the hell they do it, I, <laughs> I would look at them. Um, but yeah, the Christian in you is going to force you to pick a side. Okay. Uh, can you cure my HIV? No, I can't. Uh, what happens when I don't dream at night? Uh, what does it mean to always be waking up at witch hours, um, two to three? Yeah, it's, um, I wouldn't call them witch oh. hours, you know. You see, that's that Christian confusion thing. Uh, waking up at two to three is fine. That's kind of normal. Um, the, the inability to dream is coming from your lifestyle. So um, perhaps you are, your thoughts are overloaded throughout the day. Um, perhaps your, your feet are not touching sand. Your feet are not touching sand. Our people say, so when you go to an altar, like an Arushi, you're supposed to go barefoot when you, you know, if you're doing your acknowledgements outside, what I just did with the Anshi, you do it barefoot and you touch solid earth. And the reason is because when the message is, the answer, if I ask a question, the answer is going to come to me by way of dream. But part of that process requires me to be barefoot on earth right so if you're not dreaming i would advise you um try to spend more time bare this is going to sound out there for someone who doesn't understand what i'm saying uh but try it and see what happens i would try to walk barefoot on on bare earth i would try to touch earth i would try to make sure that the first light you see in a day is the sun so don't look at your phone don't look at like um uh, like uh, your TV, don't look at a bulb. If you have to close your eyes and get out the window, which is what I'll do, then do it. Start your day that way. Make sure your feet touch earth and don't, um, and then this is just common knowledge, don't use devices and stuff. Uh, I think it's about two hours before bed.
right? Don't use devices two hours before bed. Another way to assure oh. dreaming and more vivid dreaming is to ask questions in the day. Hmm. So if you have a traditional practice, um, you go to your altar and you ask a question, you'll dream. Uh, you're more likely to dream in that, in that sense. Uh, the more you advance yourself in the um, ancestral spirituality, the more frequently you dream. And you'll come to find that not dreaming is a sign of um, imbalance. Um, but it's not like severe. It's normal for anybody that's living in the modern world. Um, so yeah, I would have, uh, those are the things I would advise. Um, another way you can simulate, if you don't have uh, earth around you, another way you can simulate the effect of feet touching the earth is by rubbing magnesium on your feet. It is. It does a similar or the same thing. I don't know. Uh, how will you know if you're a Debia? If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. One day, if you know, you know. Um, but most, if if it's an if it's a thing you're interested in, and if it's a thing you're very passionate about, then that's who you are, right? So a lot of times, the most simple way to understand these questions is to understand yourself. Who are you? What is true to you? What matters to you? What do you do when you are not asked to do anything? What do you do when you are not forced to do anything? If you were trapped in a room for 30 days, what would you make sure to have in that room to pass your time? Um, even if it's something like, oh, I want to have something entertain me. I want to have my phone. All those things tell you something about yourself, right? What do you do as by nature? Um, what were you doing as a child? What did you want to do as a child? Now, a lot of people place a lot of emphasis on the inner child aspect of the self. I believe that the human being evolves. So a lot of the things that you wanted to be and do as a child don't make any sense as an adult, and that's fine. But there's something there, right? There's often something there. Um, but Odinani, as far as understanding the self is understanding to understand, returning to your true nature and being honest about your true nature, right? But a Debia is one of the easiest ways to know if you're a Debia is if you have a passion for knowledge. Another one is if you have a passion for, uh, for healing, right? It's, it's kind of a given. If you have a passion for healing, if you naturally gravitate towards those things. So if you are on my Patreon, I have a Patreon library. And one of the things I have in my library is this document. And it's this woman who is a midwife. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, she's a midwife. She delivers children, right? Uh, they call them Dibia Omomo. Dibia Omomo at home. She's a Dibia Omomo. And the interviewer asked her, how did she, how did you know that your it was your calling to become a DB Omomo? And she said, when I was a child, anytime birthing was happening, or any anytime midwifery was happening, I think were her words, I would appear. Right? Anytime midwifery would happen, I would appear. One of the reasons it's good to go look back at yourself as a child is because there's an ilu that says, uh, the child is a spirit, right? And so a child is guided by spirit more than logic, right? A child is guided by spirit more than logic. That's why it's very hard to tell a child to veer away from something they want. That's why it's hard to tell a child to veer away from something they love, they like. Um, that's what drives a child and pulls a child. That's why a child is um, always a reflection of whatever happens around them because spirit has a way, it's like a mirror, right? Spirit is a mirror. Whatever you show spirit, it becomes that. You understand? Um, and so the the, looking back at what you, who you were and what you did as a child tells you a lot. As a child, I would roam around in nature a lot more than my peers. As a child, I was very um, solitary. I, I like playing with myself and keeping my own company, except I would always have one very good friend. And uh, for most of my time in Nigeria when I was a child, my very good friend was my cousin and he and I reincarnated from the same person. Um, and we would, we would always be fascinated with like, we'd always be doing little projects and things like that, but it always involved like building things or learning things or like uh, messing with nature. Um, I recently posted about this on TikTok, but we had a grasshopper fighting league. <laughs> we had a grasshopper fight. It was like Pokemon before Pokemon. You know, they owe me royalties, man. I invented that whole thing. And so we had a grasshopper fighting league. And I remember I got this yellow grasshopper. That was like, this is in Nigeria. It was like destroying everybody. It was like people would gather around to watch this particular grasshopper fight because it was like, it was like the Mike Tyson of my grasshopper fighting league. And I remember when he died, he was so respected that we gave him a full funeral. 
I even I, I even have the I, well my dad covered it with tile now but I remember at a place where his grave was and I made a little cement uh like a grave thing for him and that kind of thing and uh as an adult I now realize it was a locust and I was like using a locust to eat people's grasshoppers and thinking that it was just a really strong grasshopper uh but either way you know I just those are the things I like doing as a kid like playing with animals making up things um uh wandering in nature thinking that kind of thing and it, 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 that guides me as i make decisions today because i remember that person i remember that version of myself and um the type of things that were interesting to them um and so forth right me and my brothers we you know if you get we would rather play with toys we made than like to play with like conventional toys so we'd make our own little world and things like that so of course i'm going to be in the cre uh, creative arts of course i'm going to OD on making my videos when I could just talk, <laughs> right? I'm gonna have all the little fucking comments and stuff flying around because this is who I've been since the beginning, right? So that's what it is. You know, you're a Debia because you've always been a Debia, right? If I'm saying what a, if I tell you what a Debia is and it resonates, that that there resonates for a reason because there's a lot of things I can tell you what it is and it wouldn't resonate, right? Um, but I wouldn't advise pursuing it if it's not for you, right? Anything your chi puts for you, you'll succeed in. Anything your chi puts for you, you'll succeed in. Anything. There's no such a thing as my chi wanted it, but it didn't work. If your chi puts it for you, you'll succeed in it. Um, if it's not for you, you won't succeed. And so that's kind of how you navigate. You navigate by bumping into the wall sometimes, right? Um, if it resonates, go for it. If it doesn't, um, you're under no pressure to try it. So, um, and if it doesn't, it's not going to work for you. I'll tell you that now. If it doesn't naturally resonate, if that's not who you were to begin with. Most of you who have the calling to be Debias, you're kind of already there. You're kind of already that, right? You're kind of already that. People come to you for healing. People come to you for wisdom. Um, you, by nature, are, you, you like figuring out the world and figuring out nature. Uh, you're the, the weird spiritual cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you're the weird spiritual auntie you're the weird spiritual uncle i say weird for a reason a person who is by nature supposed to be a debia is not going to act ordinary ordinary they're just gonna they're not gonna fit in and they're not supposed to fit in right um part of it is also acknowledging all these little aspects of yourself like maybe say not fitting in or not thinking like other people uh that's you were supposed to be that way right you're supposed to be that way and we'll always have that time in our life where we're trying to fit ourselves into the box of what is normal. But Odinani, being a an aware person, as far as Odinani goes, is knowing that the way you're configured is the way you're supposed to be configured. The way you are is the way you're supposed to be, right? Um, your chi didn't make any mistakes in creating you. And so what fits that person, right? The unsuppressed, undenied, uh, fully embraced you, what fits that person? And sometimes it's being a Debia. Another thing I wanted to say, because this is a really good question, and I've been on it for a long ass time, but it deserves the time I'm giving it. Another thing I want to say is that a Debia um, is a Diabia, a master of wisdom. So oftentimes, you know, when we say Debia, we're talking about a healer, right? Debia, a a healer, a medicine healer, which is what the class is for that we're teaching. Um, but there are Debias outside of that particular a debia is just a, like a genius that's all it, that's what it means it's a master of wisdoms a genius is what we call it in the west so some people are debias at writing some people are debias at dance some people's are some people some people are if your chi has given you something that pertains to wisdom at a far higher clip than it gives the people around you you are a debia and that thing that you've been given is and um, it's part of a calling. It's part of a calling. And, you know, that's like the our traditional healing class, the, 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 the Debia class, we kind of, it's, it, the class really orients about how to treat and nurture and grow your calling as much as it is about healing. So the first half of it is about that calling and learning how to be intuitive and dig and look within for answers, right? And that kind of thing. Um, and stand firm with a firm hand in your calling um, and building the courage to to do your calling as it, you are called to do it. Uh, and then kind of the second half goes into the very specifics about um, medicine and healing and um, all that stuff, right? So 
yeah, uh, that long ass answer definitely had your answer in there somewhere. So <laughs> I don't even remember the question. Oh yeah. Uh, how do you need, what do I need to build my alpha? Okay. If you're at home, if you're at home, you are going to need what well, for anybody. There are many alpha. So an alpha is anything you have a, an authority over a divine spiritually given authority over. The most common alpha is the alpha ulo, right? Or the alpha abru, which is the family alpha. If you are at home, you are married, and you have built a house, the next thing you will do is you will find out how your community gives alpha, how your community gives alpha. In my own community, um, if an alpha is being built, I will bring a um, chicken, a male chicken, um, and I will give it to a certain group in my community, um, and they're, they'll handle the rest and return an all fault to me, as well as the implementations for an all fault. Um, that is the all fault ulo. So it is a community thing. It's not something you do in private. It is a, is a, a family thing. It's not something you do with the guy on the medicine shell, right? If you are at home, you figure out how your people at home designate all fault because it's a real thing it's not just something i'm talking about online right um but um there are other all faults so like an all uh, like a dibia all for dibia traditionally what is done is you will do um iraq first right which is working with agon making peace with your agon however they translate it you'll do the ceremony for that first once that particular ceremony is done um, depending on who your like master is, who you're learning from, you will have a an initiation into Uagun, which is the world of Agun. That initiation is traditionally you're going to sit in isolation for a very long time, somehow, some way. Um, this is the one of the more common ones I know about. Um, so this the I've heard of the like a. Uh, isolation for as until can't talk you'll sit in isolation until it's said you are able to make ne agon and okay agon speak to each other the two faces of agon speak to each other you're not told what that means you're not told how to do it you just sit in a forest alone for days until it is done um that is one of the ways it is done uh traditionally um another one well the other ones i heard of will probably <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my channel shut down, but I know a Debia who who was like put underwater and kept there for a very long time. And well, he took don't do this at home. Don't do this at home. Anytime I have any Americans in my audience, I gotta like give warnings. Hey, don't do this. Don't, uh, the guy in the medicine shell said drown myself. Don't do this at home. If you do it at home and you die, that's you. It's got nothing to do with me. All right, so the he was held underwater for a very long time until he didn't need to breathe anymore. Um, and uh, he said it worked. After that, that process of making the two faces of Agon speak to each other, he said that that's what happened to him. Um, there's another one where you sit in isolation and until you see um, Arobinago, right? Or most people will call her Nago or Mwago right? Um, until you see her in the forest, then she will walk through the forest and tell you what each of the things in the forest do. So there's a lot of different ways to become a Debia. Um, if, or to, what was the question? To get an all four to become a Debia? I don't know, one of them. But this one, this is all for a Debia uh, initiation uh, situation, right? Um, so all of that, but in essence, you have to reach a point where you achieve the two faces of Agu speaking to each other. Um, I can't tell you what that means um, because I've never experienced it to my knowledge. Uh, but you will as a Debia. And then after that, things will click. Um, there are in individuals who are taught their craft through dreaming and through intuition, which our class orients around that particular way of initiation of having your intuition guide you in your dreams and so on and so forth. Um, so how do you build my alpha? Okay, yeah, the people in your community knows. Is that website in your bio? Okay, so for the DBA class, I'm gonna type the thing. I hope I don't shut this off. I don't even know how to, I don't know how to type all this. Hmm. 
No, I don't I don't know if the class is in my bio, but it's www.kedu.me. If anybody wants to do me a favor, go ahead and type that www.kedu.me. That is kedu.me. If you go there, there's an orange sign up button and then you click it, you they'll give you the options medicine or language, go to medicine, then sign up for that the class there. At the very bottom, it gives you the payment plan option if that's something you need. But I know I got some big ballers in the <laughs> got some big ballers in the audience, so I know you guys don't need that. <laughs> is there no confusion? There's no confusion when you've been raised in black. Christian liberation theology. Wonderful. Perfect. Yeah, I think I think if you're going to have like friction, it's going to come from the Christian side more than the traditional Igbo side. But one of the issues we're having at home is that people are bringing like, if you talk to somebody and they say, no, you can't be Christian, I understand what they're saying. Because people are bringing like their Christian thinking over to um, Odinani. And they're making, they're just making things unusual. So like I saw the other day, somebody had an Odinani wedding which is literally just supposed to be a, what we call a traditional wedding is an Odinani wedding. Odinani just means evil, right? And so, yes, mama, thank you. Yeah. So somebody had an Odinani wedding where they're at a river and they had like a divya officiate, which is the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life and all that stuff. And, you know, so if you're, you know, just know how to organize your mind and your, what you're doing because that's not people are trying to like create a new religion out of front which is i don't know people are just i don't know i don't uh i don't expect <laughs> i don't expect too much from humans uh what is the meaning of the appearance of a moth indoors i uh, i couldn't tell you what that means if it has a meaning at all i don't it probably just means you left your door open <laughs> uh i'm behind you okay gordon I, i'm gonna take that as like um Appreciation, uh, happy Easter for who's Easter? Who is Easter? <laughs> I don't know Easter. Do you know Easter? I remember you mentioning harm can't come if you are inside your home. Yes. Um, but what if the windows or the doors are open? LOL. Um, how does one stay protected while rebuilding their spiritual slash moral home? Um, there's an ilu that says, and this goes back to exactly what I'm saying, um, that water doesn't swallow anybody whose feet it doesn't touch, right? So if you don't want to be swallowed by the water, don't put your feet in it. You are a lot more powerful at, than anything somebody can send to you and or somebody can do but sometimes you forfeit your power and by forfeiting your power you're then susceptible to whatever by dipping your feet in uh yes mama by dipping your feet in water uh you are susceptible for drowning that kind of thing so all i would advise is keep a clean and firm hand right i call china um uh, a firm and clean hand, they say. And how do you keep a firm and clean hand? You, um, you stay moral, you stay righteous, and you don't fall below the standard you set for what is sacred, right? So we all have a standard for ourselves and a standard for what is sacred. Um, a an Igbo person, um, I'm going to start using the term Igbo person because an Odinani person doesn't make sense. An Igbo person... And the reason that we have to use Odinani is because some of these, uh, you know, these Christians are, you know, they want to be able to. So an evil person is not going to separate the conduct of the sacred and the conduct of the regular, I guess, human being. The way you treat the sacred is the way you treat the self. The way you treat the sacred is the way you treat the family. The way you treat the sacred is the way you treat the community, right? So you'll have people that will slap their wife, but they won't... Uh, they won't slap their Bible. <laughs> if you can somehow start treating yourself and your community and your family the way you treat your Bible or the way you treat your mosque or the way you treat your Quran or the way you treat your altar, then you are 150% protected. Nothing can happen to you. Yeah, no, Gabe, that made perfect sense. I appreciate your question. That was very, uh, you asked it well. Sub to the Patreon, search for the DBA consultation. Searching for the DBO. Oh, okay. Message me, um, Emeka. Message me if you want to speak to the DBO. I'll, I'll get that set up for you. Um, but the reason you're not seeing it is because you're probably not an 
I'm assuming, you're probably not on the Eze or Ezume Ezu tier. So the two top tiers are the ones, once you're there, you can then see the Divya stuff. Um, if you're not able to see it naturally, then yeah. Uh, tell the stories of why Chuku is stupid. Yeah, <laughs> ja, ja. yeah good question. So there's a series of, of stories in Igbo culture where Chuku is very, very, very dumb. And so... <laughs> <laughs> Chuku is the word for God. And so I don't know any John John. I don't know any off the top of the head. By the way, is this the John John that I know? Um, John John, have we spoken before in person by chance? If we have, let me know. So I don't know any of them off of head, but I'll definitely be sharing them on the channel because they're a lot of them are hilarious and uh uh confusing. Thoughts on transgenderism? I've never tried it. What does Odinani say about someone who becomes interested in non-Odinani spirituality, such as Hinduism, Shintoism, so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. It doesn't say anything, right? You're going to, whatever, wherever knowledge, knowledge is knowledge, and where it resonates with you, it's fine. Nothing's holding you, right? We're not in the recruiting process. I don't make this channel to recruit, right? We're not in the recruiting process. What I will say is that knowledge is knowledge. So if you see knowledge in Hinduism, go over there and, and see what you can learn. If you see knowledge in Shinto, go over there and see what you can learn. If you see knowledge um, at the mosque or in church, go over there and go, go receive it. Uh, your chi is going to take you to different places. Your chi doesn't belong to a church called Udinani, right? Your chi belongs to you and you belong to your chi. And so your chi is going to say, hey, check out this Udinani thing. But um, in about two, three years, we're going to leave it alone. We're going to go over here, right? And in the end, when everything accumulates, as you build wisdom and become an elder and you grow as a person, you'll understand why your chi took you to all these different places. I think one of the things the Abrahamic religions do is they make you guilty for like leaving, leaving, right? But you can't leave Odinani, right? Odinani is, uh, is observation. It's thinking. It's, it's, it's cosmology. It's understanding. You can't leave it. You can't enter it right? Um, there is a corpus, a body of knowledge that my particular ancestors, the Igbo people, have built up. And I think a lot, it is incredible and it can benefit anybody who looks at it, right? Um, and it's one of the most valuable things in human history and I don't want it to be lost. Um, but I'm not in the recruitment process. None of us are. Um, there's never been a time in history where an Igbo person tries to make another person become an Igbo person, right? So this, it has never happened. There's an ilu that says, Ibiri kambiri, live and let live. And everybody goes by this. There's also an ilu that says, um, let the hawk perch and let the eagle perch. And whichever one says the other one should not perch, may he break his wing first, right? It's one of the things people commonly say as they speak. And uh, all of this goes to say that, you know, we don't, there's no such a thing as I'm going to hold you and make you like me. Right. I'm going to hold you and make you like me or you. Oh, you don't. You, you, now you're with us. You can't you can't look over here. There's no go over there. Go go have fun. Travel, explore, learn. And as you come wherever you go, you become a bit a better person through uh, experience and knowledge. So you're going to reach a point where, you know, OK, I get what this guy's talking about. And you're not going to listen to me anymore. That's fine. What if you feel that you're called to do something that you're not good at? Uh, the professions that fit your talents do not resonate with you. I remember you talked about, yeah, so you find where they both, um, you find where they all coexist, right? So you have your talents and you have what resonates with you. Sometimes your talent makes your ability to do what resonates with you a lot more resonant and clear, right? So there, my talent and what it interests talents and what my interests it's hard to draw a relationship line but i've combined them all and they guide me and it does well so it's not and then callings are not like careers callings are not jobs right it's not um i think that's a very american way of seeing that a calling is not a job uh, a job can be in a, a calling right a talent can be in a calling but there's a lot more to a calling than that a calling is an actuality is an actuality, right? So if you um, have an allergy to Brussels sprouts, your part of your calling is to not eat that damn Brussels sprout. That's your actuality. You're a, you're a, a creature that was created not to eat that particular thing, right? But some people will be like, oh, I'm allergic to it, but let me eat it. You know, Andrew Tate said I should eat, you know? <laughs> right? So it's just, it's, it's just your nature. What is your nature? 
what is your nature? What is your truth? What is your actuality? And and understanding that that particular way of being, the way you were created, is the way you were supposed to be created, and it is perfect as it is. Right? You are a person to be realized. You are not a project to be worked on. And I hope you can understand that because I think the first the, the religion of the United States of America is self help. So everybody believes that they need to that they they're 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 broken. They need to be fixed. Right? And that's just kind of how this particular culture and society functions. And if you were born into this culture and society, it's fine. There's a, there's a reason, right? Maybe you're supposed to have a little self-help phase. I had a self-help phase. I read all them books. <laughs> and, you know, I came out better for it. Uh, but, yeah, so a calling is not going to be a profession. So if you have a talent, you have what resonates with you, um, it's an actuality. They can both coexist. You don't have to pick a side. Um your talents will enhance your calling, your calling will enhance, or your profession, uh, and your profession will enhance your talents if you can make them blend and work together. Now, if you do have something you have a talent for, but you don't like it, I would actually look into the history you have with that quote unquote, um, with not necessarily quote unquote, with the talents and the world around you, right? So oftentimes, what our chi gives us as our gift is like sand, right? Sand is so abundant in the world that we, on a day-to-day, -day, we don't ordinarily place value in it. Even though it's one of the most valuable things in the world, even though we're made of it, right? Even though it's one of the most incredible things in creation. Because there's so much sand in the world, we're not going to value it. But there are people, and this is your personal world, your azumezu has a lot of sand. And then another person says, you know, they don't have that sand whatsoever. So take some of that sand and pour into them. And all of a sudden you've done a miracle. Now in your head, you're just like, it's just sand, right? It's, who cares? It's just sand. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we have gifts, it doesn't appear like something that's, that's worth it because it's so abundant to us, period, right? It's abundant to us. It's not a big deal, right? Like, I don't know why they're tripping us. It's just this, but to another person, that's 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 a that's a miracle. That's something amazing. It's something that doesn't naturally exist except by you, right? Um, so oftentimes, because it, our gifts are abundant within us, we think they're not valuable because we're conditioned to think things that are rare are valuable, things that are abundant are not valuable, right? The more rare, the more valuable, the more abundant, the, the less valuable. It's it, it, it's not like that. It can be the other way around. For a lot, for most of us, it is. Okay. So I'll explore what that because I you know I have gifts, but I don't I don't think they're anything crazy, right? I don't think it's anything out there. But some people do. A lot of people do, right? They think that it's something else. Um, and then I learn to embrace them and walk in the world with them. And understand that it's not supposed to feel like this, this, uh, my previous idea of extraordinary, right? But it is extraordinary because it's mine and not somebody else's, right? Uh, somebody says two sides of the brain. Maybe. Could be. I think it's a little deeper than two sides of the brain, though, but I think that's a good, uh, that's a good way to put it. Do DBS have the ability to do things like talk to animals? Yes. Uh, they behave like they understand you, walk, ants. Yeah, absolutely. Kofo, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Um, but every DBS gift is going to manifest differently. So if you have that particular gift, there's something, you're coming closer to understanding what your full actuality is. Because again, you may not, like let's say you have that particular, what you mentioned, the, you know, being able to communicate animals. It's so natural to you, it may not seem like anything, right? But... That is going to be what you're going to use to save somebody's or some animal's life, or that's what you're going to use. That's 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 what makes you special. So a Debia finds their own powers. Everybody has their own powers. I have powers that you don't have. You have powers I don't have. Becoming a Debia is realizing your own powers and then making them available to um to the uh mission of healing the world right i'll do more do you know of a devia whose practice is in the visual arts um oh such a good question um like healing through sharing wisdom or imagery as medicine yes 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 um data 
uh, data, um, oral worry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. 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 Um, again, your powers are not going to look like mine. My powers are not going to look like yours. And if yours come in the, by way of visual arts, that's just what it is, right? That's just what it is. Um, that is absolutely normal. That is absolutely normal. Your Agon can just pour the gift into you that only comes out as, or not only, but that most optimally comes out as visual arts, right? A lot of um, artists you see, a lot of the great artists you see, they're Debias. They're Debias, right? What is a Debia? A Debia is a D Abia, a master of wisdom. But if we take Abia even further, Abia is the wisdom that comes from the divine. It's not your wisdom. It's not your wisdom. It's the wisdom that comes from the divine. It's the wisdom that flows down on you from the flow state. Let's call it the flow state, right? So a lot of times when you're making art, a lot of times when you're making art, you or visual art, whatever it may be, through maybe video, paint, drawing, whatever visual medium you use, uh, performance, um, you will understand if you've done it before you'll understand this is coming from somewhere else it's not it's not all the way me i can say i want to do this thing then all of a sudden you start doing it and it starts guiding itself okay but this one's red okay but this one's whatever okay this one's purple oh i don't have any purple go get purple you go get purple Boom. now you could just use the ones you had but that thing said this is purple right it's coming from somewhere else when you're doing arts when you're creating it is coming from somewhere else that is abia there is wisdom from beyond. It is the exact same thing as prophecy. It is the exact same thing as channeling. It is the exact same thing as entering a trance. It is all of those things. But when we do it because it's so abundant to us, we don't think it's anything special. We think that a bunch of blue uh, mist has to be flying around for us to think that something spiritual is happening. But it is spiritual, right? Um, a di a master of that 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 wisdom that comes from beyond what a devia is is almost like a satellite receiver you are a satellite receiver for receiving abia these messages these signals these inspirations these downloads these impulses from the source and when you as the receiver receives it you share it with the world the way it's supposed to be shared so a devia is not only going to want to do their craft they're also going to want to share it with the world because they feel that the world needs it, that it's going to do something positive for the world, right? So absolutely. So traditionally, we have a lot of uh, um, visual artists who are Debias. If you look at like a Debia, Mao Masquerade Debias, right? There are Debias who specialize in forming, channeling, and controlling masquerades. Um, and they heal, they are healers. Um, there's this really good video online um with adibia um who he's giving a lecture in the u.s and he he's talking to this uh white woman who is like some type of nurse or cna or something like that and he puts on the mask and the mask is a woman it's 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 um it's the mask is an elder a great woman and he, he approaches the woman and he begins speaking to her um uh, I don't know, I think in the Igbo, I can't remember, but he's speaking to her and the woman just starts bawling, bawling, starts crying, starts crying. They asked her why she's crying, she says she doesn't know, but that was really profound and she felt something, you understand? That is a visual art debia, a debia, a masquerade debia. But there's a lot of ways that the gift manifests. There's a lot of ways that the gift manifests. Some people are, devi are devias by way of dance, right? Some people are devious by way of dance. Some people are um, devious by way of speech or prophecy. Um, however your gift manifests is, is how it manifests. And if you're already naturally inclined to look in this direction, right, then that's that's probably what it is. Adama. A good question. Is there an Odinani astrology? Um, not that I know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Right. I, one has been proposed to me, but I would, I'd want to see more evidence of it elsewhere. I don't think there were an ancient people that don't have an astrology. It just wasn't something that was emphasized when I was growing up. And so, um, I'm continuing to look into it. Um, no, we haven't spoken. Okay. John, John, my bad. I thought you were somebody else. 
Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is it wise to end a contract with a family deity, such as land deities, etc., if it's causing problems because no one is holding up the contract and they don't care about anything traditional? Um... The, the reason I'm thinking about this, because it's kind of, it's a no brainer for me, but I'm trying to understand your situation a little bit more. Um, but why not just find out what the contract is and uphold it? It's, no, it's, it's never anything ridiculous, right? Some of those, some of those family contracts, right? Like, for example, a lot of people who have the gift of being a Debia also have what we would call mental illness in their family right and what ends up happening is that mental illness is is something we call ara this is an example that may not be your situation but i'm gonna give you an example of what those contracts are right and so the the contracts one of those contracts and i'm doing this is, oh, yeah. oh, this one is done i don't think i'm gonna finish the other one i was trying to do all this live but i don't think i'm gonna finish it so where are yeah be right yeah, take it for and put it somewhere. Yeah, so those contracts. So let's say you have this this recurring mental illness that appears in the family. This is a traditional Igbo situation. So what ends up happening is you may find out that it's not really insanity or mental illness. It's aragon. Aragon is when a person is called to be a dibia and they don't follow their calling their agon leaves them or or their agon um stops walking with them and then all of a sudden their reality feels shattered they they can't make out what's real what's not real um just th their mind kind of goes haywire after that right and so this is why a lot even in contemporary western culture we know there's an association with genius and mental illness and so the or a correlation that's they appear with each other a lot and so what ends up happening is you'll go and perform Iragun, which is making peace with Agun if you're affected by this thing, even before. But let's say this that's how it started. You perform Iragun, which is making peace with Agun. In the process of Iragun, at the end, you will build an Agun altar. That Agun altar will be passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. It's not like a normal altar where you dismantle it or you get rid of it once you pass away, right? Um, the altar, the Agun altar will go from generation to generation to generation to generation. Now, if you go destroy it, and that's fine. If you follow the contract, the contract is going to be, you need to do your Agun and you should be a Debya. Now, why is it saying that? It's not saying that because you're like, because the, the altar is making that happen. The altar is an acknowledgement that your ancestor made. Hey, we have this thing in our family. We have this thing in our bloodline. It's going to keep popping up. When it pops up, go to the altar. You'll, you'll get the answer for what to do next, right? When it pops up, go to the altar. You'll know what to do next at that point, right? So if you guys are at the point where you think it's causing the problems, and because it wants, people want it, it, it needs this particular acknowledgement, people aren't acknowledging it, you're not thinking of it correctly. You're not thinking of it right. Imagine a person has alcoholism in their family, right? Hi. In I don't know if you're in America, but in America, they have this thing called Alcoholics Anonymous, where you join it, you have, you're an alcoholic, you, have, you admit you're an alcoholic, and then they give you like a badge when you're done. And what if you had a family heirloom where from generation to generation, you just pass on this badge from generation to generation and so forth. But then, you know, and then somebody who has that badge goes, oh, I'm a descendant from an alcoholic. I should probably stay away from alcohol. I should, I should, I should probably live this particular lifestyle and avoid these particular places because our family heirloom literally says, hey, buddy, you got this in your family. This is in your blood. So what happens when you forget the meaning of that badge? You forget the meaning of Alcoholics Anonymous. You don't know what it is. And you still have this badge. And all of a sudden, about 50% of your family has alcohol addiction. And you start thinking the badge is causing the alcohol addiction. That's what's going on with a lot of families at home with their altars. Those altars are medicine. There's something within you guys that this thing is medicine for. It's not asking you to acknowledge it. It's not causing the problem. 
It is sealing the problem and it is a means of you acknowledging the problem because the problem is also associated with a gift. So if you have an Agu installation which passes on from generation to generation to generation, you don't need to come to the medicine shell and figure out if you're a deep yet. Look at your backyard. <laughs> Look at your backyard, right? Look at your backyard, you'll know. You understand? Um, those things are tools to help you. They're not things you're beholden to. So if you guys feel the need to destroy it, okay, fine, sure. You know what? I can't stop you. But I would just say figure out whatever it wants and just do it because that thing was put there for a reason, right? It's not, you're not behold, it's not stronger than you, right? There's an ilu that says, um, uh, the arushi that becomes too arrogant should be used for firewood, right? These things aren't your god. They're not, you're not beholden to them. They don't control you, right? But they're going to serve specific purposes. Solving a problem, acknowledging a reality, giving a power, which is also solving a problem, right? Solving a problem, acknowledging a reality, giving a power. Those three things. And for some reason, your ancestors felt those things were necessary. In my family, we have Nze in my family, right? What's up? I'm, I'm uncomfortable right now. You're uncomfortable? Oh, yeah, Lita? Lita? In my family, we have Nze in my family. So anybody by birth, this guy right here is an Nze, right? But he's Nze Obere. I'm an Nze. I'm an Nze Obere. You understand, Right? That means that there's an Nze title in at home, and by birth, we're already Nze Obere in our family, right? That kind of thing. Now, if I, now, I mean, I don't, I, should I, I don't know if I should explain what an Nze is, but an Nze is like um, a living ancestor. That's what it is, a living ancestor. And Nze Obere is not quite there. It's just kind of like an alumni. There we go. That's a good way to get more. <laughs> or like alumni, right? <laughs> Into the Nze thing. And... There's a certain way an Inze acts in the world, and there's a certain way you treat an Inze in the world. And it is exactly how I act, and it is exactly how I prefer to be treated. And it's exactly how he acts, <laughs> and exactly how he prefers to be treated. And it's exactly how my dad acts, and it's exactly how my dad prefers to be treated. And it is treated, right? And it is treated. Um, it's exactly how my grandfather acted, and it's how he prefers to be treated. So if there was an Nze installation, which typically there's not, and I destroy, okay, fine, but that thing is telling me something about myself. Yeah. It's an acknowledgement, right? Hey, you have this thing in you. It's just what it is. So when the time comes, you may want to go take that title, right? But, you know, I don't know. People got a different mentality about it. The one I'm telling you is the actual one. I hope that that answer helped because then I, I took my time with it too because it's very necessary. Fortunately, we forgot dreams that we don't write down. Are there ways to have dreams revisit it, revisit us? Um, don't trip too much on the dream. It's like, uh, don't, it's not important. The dream itself is not the important part. But if you're looking for an answer, let me put it this way. If you are looking for an answer, if you are looking for a connection, and you're able to ask your chi for that answer, and you're able to ask your chi for that connection, and you're sincere about it. You're, you're asking with your spirit, not with your mouth, or not because the guy on the internet told you to, right? You're sincere. You're asking with your heart. And you receive that answer in that dream, you don't really need to remember the details. Sometimes you'll get a message in a dream, right? Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Sometimes you get a message in a dream, um, and it's important. You're not going to forget it. The key is to be deliberate about your dreaming. Dreamings, dreams don't have to happen by accident. So you can ask your dreams for something and you receive it. And if you need it, you'll carry on. But you don't need to, if you, if you forget it and you're surviving and thriving and moving through life and you're fine, don't worry about the details. When you ask for answers, you'll receive the answer. In 20 days, you'll absolutely forget the details of the dream, but you'll know the answer right but you'll still have that answer so that's really what it is it's like having a phone conversation with somebody and you ask somebody that person some something important right uh i don't, <laughs> I don't know if you guys recently see, saw this clip with uh gerard 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 carmichael and uh tyler the creator where he's asking tyler he's like uh 
uh, he has a crush on Tyler, the creator or something, and he's like trying to ask him out or I don't know what he's doing in that thing. I think he's trying to act like, hey, why aren't you acknowledging how I feel about you? Now, the details of that conversation don't matter, but the answer to that specific question does. So he might in 40 days, if that weren't on film, he may forget the details, but he'll remember the answer. So be deliberate about your dreaming, receive, go there to receive, receive what you need. Don't worry about the details. You can also keep a dream diary. Good. That's a good one. Uh, just because you don't transform into Gandalf doesn't make your method of sharing. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you don't have to transform into Gandalf. Cool. The cost of high titles reminds me of the cost of a uni degree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're very similar. They're similar. The... The degree program, the, the setup of the college program um, is an African tradition, right? The throwing of the hat, the big ass, the gown, right? You go to the Sahel and look around, they're all wearing, they look like they're all graduating, right? So it's an African tradition. And so that a concept of degrees and all these different things and mystery schools and all that, it's all from Africa, it's all from us. Um, and so there's a lot of things like the, the Inze, the Oz, all those are, you can call them mystery schools, um, but it's not like you're sitting down and learning. It's a whole different way of learning or actualizing. And um, you'll see a lot of parallels between that and uh, what comes to become the university system in the West. So but it's the same thing, receiving titles, all that stuff. So. But yeah, the high cost. Some of them aren't that expensive though. But there's the the the, the like also, all those are very expensive. Definitely, the flow state feels like a trance. Yes, it is. It's a trance. Oh, but it got more. Uh, where I'm tapped into something that I can't always explain. Thanks for explanation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's what Abia is. That's what Abia is. Right. Your chi, your chi feels like life. Your chi feels like life. So whenever you do something and you feel very alive, that's your chi, right? Whenever your personal sun is very bright, that is your chi. And one of the times, or one of the one of the most common times, we really feel that connection is when we're in that flow state. We're doing the thing that we're supposed to be doing, right? Now, children enter that flow state often and naturally. They can go play a game and all of a sudden they're in that world, so on and so forth. Um, as you become an adult, it becomes more specific or you become you come to realize your own. Um, but that's what it feels like. It feels like life because a flow state is like a lot of life. It just feels like your cup is very full of life at that moment, right? That's what it is. So, When I do these, I'm very much in a flow state, except right now I'm not because one, my kids aren't gonna leave me. <laughs> my kids aren't gonna get off my ass. And um for some reason, in order to be in a flow state, I have to be in a closed room. Or let me not say in order, but most often the channel my my Ikenga. I, I typically channel it in a closed room and they're not gonna let that door shut, so <laughs> I'll do my... Oh man. Avatar the last airbender got so much yeah uh gabe so on patreon we have this group study um where we all just get on zoom and we all just talk and uh, we usually have a topic and without anybody who's been i swear every four group studies somebody recommends i watch avatar right but at this point i'm old and it's so long that i can't i can't see myself getting into it at this point hi hi there you go mama so hard. Oh, damn, my. Yeah, my 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 daughter's giving me things to open. So, damn, my. my daughter was an is and why or a female DBF in her past life. Um, she was reincarnated from my grand aunt who was a uh, palm reader. Palm reader. So when you if you watch my video, Akaraka explained um, the palm reading explain the video uh, i think i tell a story about her i also tell a story about when my brother's legs were broken as an infant and how we took him to a hospital here in the u.s and they weren't able to do anything and my grand uncle used uh, traditional medicine and got him walking within a week um the the 
my mom had to correct me and say it wasn't just your grand uncle it was your grand aunt he your grand uncle was going to your grand aunt to know how to for the 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 method right she was the one guiding the whole thing but she was just blind so she couldn't uh she wasn't he did the physical stuff for her as her husband and stuff and uh so i didn't know that but yeah so she's the one that that healed his leg um, I haven't told my brother that story, by the way, or that that that's her. I don't know if he knows, so I gotta tell him. But yeah, I didn't mind. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Try to keep a dream. Okay, yeah. Yo, it looks like either you guys are out of questions or this thing has paused. And then I'll do that. Either you guys are out of questions. I'm trying to still trying to figure out how to type. I used to know how to do it. I can start a poll. Oh, that's not. I'm trying to do i can okay top chat live chat all messages visible i think that's what i have on oh let me oh oops okay no i didn't have that on the same thing and then none okay looks like we're all out of questions okay wait no we got more shout out to data uh do talents gifts your chi reveal in stages yes yes absolutely yeah absolutely yeah um, it reveals in stages. It, it, it shows your chi will show you what it needs to show you when it needs to show it. Um, right. And there's no reason rushing your chi because at the end of your chi working is your death. Right. There's no reason rushing it. So the journey of life is receiving new things and always being open to them, um, which I would advise. Don't tie yourself down to one particular concept of yourself. Right? Don't tie yourself down to a single concept of yourself. Allow those new versions to manifest and flow with it, move with it. Allow them to be shown to you or for you to discover them and to move with it and flow with it. Right. A lot of times we, we, we try to build an identity um, or an understanding of who we are. And then three years later, something else is revealed to us. And now we have a hard time letting go of the previous one because, oh, that's not me. You know what I mean? Or that kind of thing. Sometimes you need to let go of that and, and and go the other direction. If I still had the mentality of holding on to that, I couldn't have possibly done this channel because I always understood myself to be a skeptical, non-spiritual person. Thank you for your time with us and your wisdom. Uh, thick and well. <laughs> uh, thick and well. You've got, a, you've got a great name. So yeah, thick and well. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, stay thick and stay well. Adama. <laughs> hey um oh uh, Fe uh phoenix indigo i missed your question how long have we been here did i miss too much no just the same usually about an hour 12 minutes usually around this time people run out of questions though it, i don't know there'll be a replay so you can watch the replay but um it's just the usual. To me, we've been hanging out, so maybe you missed something. But to me, it's just been normal talking. Uh, okay, I'll do my, I'm checking if I missed any questions. Uh, forget dreams. I'll do my. Oh, oops, 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 oops. Yeah, it doesn't look like I missed any. I'll do my. So, yeah, Dada, you ask some really good questions. Huh? It sounds like you are on the cusp of something very big. So, yeah, shout out to Dada. I'll do my. All right, y'all, we're going to head out. I think we are all out of questions. So um, as always, the absolute best way to support the channel is patreon.com slash the medicine shell. Um, I've been at a lot of people ask me about the traditional medicine classes. They are starting April 22nd. Thank you for the date, um, Ogechi. Um, we are, I try to keep it limited to 12 people, but by at least by the middle of next week, we'll, we'll pass that. So I'm going to extend that to like 15 um and so just try to get signed up as soon as you can um if you need time message me um if you need a payment plan message me uh but if you go to www.kedu.com and you know click the sign up button and then go to the medicine part um you'll see at the very bottom there's a, a means to have a payment plan or to do the payment plan thing. Um, but either way, I look forward to... Oh, mama, uh-uh. No, mba, mba. Okay. So I look forward to... You know, this... It, kids are so funny. My son is the most careful person in the world. 
And my daughter right now is trying to ram into a glass, <laughs> into a glass door. Well, please, I'm by, I'm by. So, and that's just their personalities in a nutshell. But um, that being said, you guys, um, thank you as always for being here. When is your next live? Every weekend. Yeah, I try to do them Saturdays at 8.30 Central Time. Saturday, 8.30 Central Time, I try to do them. Um, but sometimes I'm gonna be frank, I'm really not in the mood. <laughs> sometimes I'm really not in the mood. So some, some Saturdays I miss it. So the best thing to do is to hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell icon so that your phone just gives you a notification. It says, Hey, he's going live today. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'm really not in the mood and I feel like if I come here and I'm not in the mood, like right now, I'm kind of not all the way in the mood. Um, just cause, um, my attention is being pulled in so many places. Um, and I've spent the whole day playing with the kids and I kind of want to continue that. I've been having fun. That's why I was working on, I thought I was going to work on the Lego, but I got too caught up in my thoughts. Um, which is fine. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'm just not in the mood, but, um, typically Saturday, uh, eight, uh, 30 central time. Uh, we have a group study on Patreon. If you enjoy this thing we do here with this live, I would highly, highly, highly advise joining the group study on Patreon. Um, we do it every second Sunday, but there's like a, it pops up, you'll get a notification every second Sunday morning and we pick a topic and we go in depth and discuss it. I'm trying to remember the last topic we did because that was a really good discussion. Something about intuition. It was something related to intuition. If anybody, if anybody can help me remember if you're here, let me know. But something about intuition. Into intuitive learning, learning from your intuition. Something. But it was inspired by like a Miles Davis video that I posted earlier. So we went in depth and the types of experience and knowledge that the different members of our community share is just it's like incredible. It's awesome. So yeah. I was unclear on Eagle Fold. So, so. Is there, is the prayer meant to be spoken in Igbo? Yes, it is. Um, if only pray for market, okay, wait. If only pray to the four market days to connect the ancestors, <coughs> do I not need their names? Would that be, no, no, you don't just, okay, all right, let me just read the whole thing before I start answering. Thank you for your time. Hey, thank you for that. No, um, yeah, no, you're not, uh, it's not like a prayer to the four market days, right? So anytime you're doing anything evil, right, you're acknowledging, there's acknowledgements. You know, okay, so it's just acknowledgements. So if you're doing ego awful, before you start talking about yourself, you acknowledge everybody in attendance. Who is in attendance? Your creator is in attendance. The earth is in attendance. Whatever day it is, be it eke, uri, afo, unpo, is in attendance. Um... The sun is in attendance. Light is in attendance. And then, of course, your ancestors, because you're there, your ancestors are in attendance. So you're acknowledging them, right? You're going to say their names. You understand. You're going to say that you're absolutely going to say. There's no such a thing. Igor ah. Fo is the most, is pure ancestral connection. So there's no such a thing as ego all full without your ancestors. You're going to mention your ancestors' names, right? If you think about it as who am I praying to, then you're going to confuse yourself. So just leave that prayer word. I'm saying it wrong. is an entirely different thing, right? Prayer is a different thing. Ego all full is ego all full. It's what it is. It's not accidentally called ego all full, right? It's ego all full. It's not, that's not, it's not, okay, but they meant prayer. No, it's ego all full, right? So before you do ego alpha, you are going to acknowledge everybody in attendance, your ancestors, all of that. The alpha is in here for all, as far as your ancestors goes, what remains of your ancestors, what your ancestors have left for you. That's what ego alpha is. So you're absolutely going to acknowledge your ancestors, right? And yeah, and then before you even start the Akam Diyacha, before you start like, you know, really saying why you're worthy of holding the awful, you're going to, of course, acknowledge everybody that you need to acknowledge, everything that you need to acknowledge, right? That kind of thing. So yeah, you're, it's not a prayer to the four market days. The reason people say the four market days is because everything in creation can be broken down into eke, orie, afo, 
So if you say eke orie afonko, you have covered everything. You've covered everything, right? You've covered everything, right? But like, I don't know if you grew up in the culture, if you see like a meeting and the person speaking stands up and, and says, I, I want to acknowledge um, uh right let's say it's a big wedding and there's different people in a group you know right you acknowledge and then you may call the names of specific people within that group right but if you also say you cover everybody so is closer to right so i've if i say i've covered one fourth of the human family if I say Uriye, I've now covered two fourths of the human family. If I say Afo, if I add Afo, I've now covered three fourths. Uh, I've covered everything. Now everybody's been included. But I can also acknowledge people individually after saying that big house they belong to, right? That big organization, that big belonging that they're a part of, right? So, yeah, you go Afo, you're absolutely going to mention your ancestors. It is, there's nothing like Afo without ancestors. Um, like I said, there's, again, people are coming into Odinani with, like, this church mentality, so people are trying to, like, create this thing where, like, you just do by yourself in secret, and you don't, there's no family to it, and yeah, and that's, that's just not what the hell's going on, right? That's not what's going on. Look, go, go to your community, see what the elders are doing, that's, they're, they're close to it. A bit more. I have to commend your multitasking skills. <laughs> I have just one toddler. Oh, thank you. I have just one toddler, and I would have been a hot mess. In my head right now, I'm a hot mess. So if this is all coming out clear and coherent, then I'll um, Yes, the last topic was intuition. Oh, Dada, you're okay. So you're in the group. Okay, you, you go by a different name in there. So I got to figure out what your secret alias is. So I'll um, Should meditate or do any rituals during the eclipse? Um, no, I don't know anything as far as um, Igbo culture goes and eclipses. Um, I don't know anything other than acknowledging that it's an eclipse. So I don't know anything particular that as far as Igbo culture and eclipses go. Um, there's nothing that I'm aware of. Um, I have looked into it. I'm, I'm not seeing or hearing or picking up anything. So um, if you want to, absolutely go ahead, right? If you want to. I'll do my... Uh, or if you feel that it should be done, do it. Uh, sorry uh, if I meant only wanting to acknowledge market days, connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you use the market days to connect those unknown ancestors, right? So again, if I'm going to attend a big meeting and the Ohaneze group showed up and I say, the Ohaneze, maybe I don't know all their names, but I just said Ohaneze, so they're all covered. You understand? Uh, so if you say, okay, you've covered all the Eke people, Ori, covered all the Ori, I folk of all and that kind of thing, so... Thank you. Thank you. That's a good question. I've been a Patreon member, but yet to show up for the group study. Oh, okay. I'll do my, I'll show up soon. Okay, cool. Yeah, you asked really dope questions, so I think it'd be fun to have you there. So, isn't it funny when I said we got to, I'm gonna, about to leave, you guys finally came with the questions. <laughs> uh, I watched a video on Irish she and how they are a liaison type force to Chuku. Yes, yes. Uh, but Chuku can't directly communicate to humans. Um, I thought our ancestors play that part. Are they the same thing? Um, your ancestors are your ancestors, and Chuku is Chuku, but they're all the same thing, right? They are all the exact same thing, right? So Chuku created you, and your mother and father created you. And your ancestors created your mother and father, or your grandparents, let me say. And your ancestors created your grandparents, and their ancestors, and their ancestors, and their ancestors. And if you take it all the way back to the absolute beginning of what we call life, the earth created life. The earth and the sky, her husband, created life, right? And if you take it way back, the universe created the earth and created the sky, right? If you take it even further back, Chuku created all of that, right? So what does that mean? If I'm acknowledging my creator as, if Chuku is my creator, all of that is Aka Chuku. All of that is Chuku. So don't try to picture Chuku as this like 
comic book character with a beard that sits in clouds and does whatever. That's not what Chuku is, right? Chuku is the highest creator. That if I see myself as a branch of something, which is what you are, you are a branch. If I go all the way back to the seed that created this tree, that is what I can call the chi uku of this entire thing. <laughs> but if I'm acknowledging my full self, right? If I'm feeding or giving acknowledgments to my full self, I am acknowledging my parents because I am them. I am acknowledging my ancestors because I am them. I am acknowledging the earth and the sky because I am earth and sky. I am acknowledging eke, light, uri, water, afo, earth, wind. Uh, because I'm all of that. And if I'm not any of that, if you're not any of that, if you don't believe you're any of that, go ahead, give me, live without any of those things for three months. Live for 21 days and come back to me and tell me you don't believe that you're part water, right? <laughs> come back to me and believe. Don't do it, by the way, you know. You know. <laughs> don't do it. I've been being hypothetical. I'm hoping your imagination can do it for you, right? So if you don't believe, right? So all of those things. So Chuku is not like a comic book character, though. You know, a lot of folklore will try to depict it that way because folklore is for kids, right? There's an ilu that says, you know, it's funny because my job is sharing folklore. That says that, uh, um, what does it say? Um, an old man who listens to folklore is still a child or something like that. Uh, or an elder that listens to a folklore is still a child, an elder man, okay? Like, a, yeah, an elder man. And so, yeah, most of the folklores were told by by uh, women back in the day. Um, but yeah, even if you read things fall apart, you'll 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 see that scene where um, I think I can't remember which one of Okonko's sons is listening to the mother tell folklore, and then he walks in the room and laughs at the son. He says, "Oh, so you're here listening to women's stories, that kind of thing, right?" Um, and so forth. So sometimes in folklore, Chuku is depicted as a, a as a uh, character but Chuku is not a character Chuku is a force the force that created everything and that force created through your ancestors through the earth through all these things so all of that is Chuku so if you want to say that the Abara are conduits of Chuku yeah absolutely you can definitely say that because Chuku acts through water Chuku acts through wind Chuku acts through earth Chuku acts through sun Chuku acts through um uh, light and darkness, all that. Chuku acts with all of that. So all of the Abara that are represented by those different elements um, are the hands of Chuku, but your ancestors are too, and your parents are, and you are, right? You're, it's all part of one organism, and Chuku is the life force flowing through that organism, right? That kind of thing. So try to see it that way. Try to see it that way. Okay, let's see, what are we doing? Uh, what's up, family? Long time. Hey, day one one. How much time is needed per week to invest in traditional medicine class? Uh, it's on my radar, but I have four project. Damn. Okay. Um. Yeah. If you don't have like full time to commit, it's no rush. We're gonna be doing it four times a year. Um. But I, th off the top of my head, I think it's three days a week. Off the top of my head. I think it is three days a week, and the classes are about an hour and a half to two hours. I still haven't decided whether it should be two hours or an hour and a half. I think an hour and a half would actually be fine. The language class is two hours, but in language classes, you need to like give people a time to speak and do things and that kind of thing. With the traditional medicine class, not as much. It's not as as interactive as trying to learn a language. So it doesn't probably doesn't need two hours. So it's probably an hour, 30 minutes, three days a week. So I don't know. If that works for you, and then I want to say it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, but I'll be emailing everybody who signed up the, the schedule this coming week. So um and we're still put we're still organizing that schedule aspect. Um, but I do know it's the beginning of the week. So Monday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then it is, um, can't I think Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then it is in the evening. Um, it's in the evening, I think six central time. 
I anything pertaining to numbers, you can't ask me off the fly. So, um, but if you need it, message me. I'll give you the. I'll look it up and give it to you. Um, yeah. So, Ardima. So, Yoruba concept of ase blows the Asian concept of chi and prana out of the conversation. Do Igbo have similar power of taking hold? You'd have to explain what I say is. If you can explain what I say is, I can then tell you what it is. Um, as far in, in Igbo language, can Obanje Dada cut their hair? Um, are they special? If they can, oh yeah, good question. Uh, <laughs> you guys heard about those? You guys ever hear about those uh, homeless men that when they cut their hair they die? That's the real Obanje Dada. <laughs> <laughs> or like those homeless men that don't bathe and then somebody decides to be like a, a a good citizen and give them a bath and then they die that's that's closer to obanje than that kind of thing it's not everybody that has dada is obanje but a lot of people with dada a lot of not everybody um, or Indimiri, and Indimiri doesn't necessarily mean Obanje. So Onyemiri that has born with Dada, they can cut their Dada, but they'll feel, um, they won't feel good about it. Um, they'll feel, they won't feel as strong or whatever. They won't feel as whole, but an actual Obanje will die. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> um, oh, that's such a hard question to answer. Uh, but I, I think, I think, don't underestimate the bizarreness of Obanje behavior. Most of you who are here having conversations with me and trying to piece this thing together, you're probably not Obanje, right? Uh, that are having these coherent questions and trying to make sure, let me make sure I don't die. And Obanje is going to know if I cut this thing, I'll die, right? That kind of thing. They're going to know. Um, yeah, so I think that like those guys who don't like bathe and then somebody showers them, they just die. After, I think that's closer to what you'd see with Obanje than like, you know, just a guy who happens to not want to bathe or not want to cut their dada. Does a Debia teach a traditional medicine class? Yes. So we have a Debia, a Debia, a Debia teaching the traditional medicine class. He is also our in-house Debia. So he does like readings for our patrons and things like that. Um, but yeah, Debia is teaching the class. He's going to be teaching from Nigeria. That I locked, I research my hair mats up. Does that mean that? Okay. Uh, okay, so, oh, Siberia. Ndewo. Ndewo. Mwama diaha. Ndewo. Okay, last live, someone asked. Uh, hair lock up. Hair locking up is not the same as that. That, that, that is like your hair just grows out of your scalp as dreadlocks, right? That should just, it's just, it just, that is what it is. Um, that kind of thing, right? Uh, does it, that no matter what you do with it, it'll just try to return back to dreadlocks. So, uh, those guys sound like they're living spirits in the city. They're homeless in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's closer to Obanje than like Dada and Obanje is not always the same thing. A lot of Obanje have Dada, but, or not a lot of some. Some Obanje have Dada, but not everybody with Dada is Obanje. Obanje is like, the behavior level is out there. You're not like, is out there. Like you, it's like Florida man. Like, <laughs> it's like Florida man level. It's not like slightly curious adult, young adult, you know? It's like Florida man, like man uh, 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 decides to beat up alligator after alligator divorces man like that's that's what one j level behavior so a bit more. Uh, has any of your videos delved into dreadlocks a lot of dreadlock questions maybe it's time i saw somewhere that dreadlocks in evil culture is a sign of medicine man yeah. so yeah yeah so a lot of um a lot of dada like a dada person you know is associated with water typically um, though there are exceptions, and it's a sign because Dada hair is uh, is spirit hair. It's hair from Alamo, so it's a sign that the person lives between both of those worlds. Um, and oftentimes, it makes sense for that person to use that connection 
um, to serve the community by healing. Um, so yeah, oftentimes, yeah, that's the connection. Um, that kind of thing. But I think it's time. Maybe it's time for me to do a video on data. Um, I'll consider it. I'm working on a few videos right now. Um, has any of it, but no, I haven't specifically dived into, delved into Dada. Um, I've mentioned it. I think I mentioned it in my Nemiri or Shimmiri explained video. Um, yeah. Speaking of hair, what do you make of the concept of guys from back in the days kept their hair long? Bro, why is everybody on some like long? <laughs> I'm just messing. Yeah, no, I've got, I appreciate the questions, guys. Uh, speaking of hair, what do you make of the concept that the guys back in the day uh, kept their hair long for certain spiritual purposes or connection? Yeah, sometimes it's necessary, um, but just kind of know what you're doing. Uh, most of the time it's not, but sometimes it is. Um, same thing goes with beards, all those different things. Sometimes it's necessary for one thing or another. Um but it, I mean, if you need it, sure, right? If you figure out what it does for you or what it does, period, and you need that thing, sure. But it doesn't mean that, like, if you have longer hair, you're more spiritual, right? Um, uh, uh, adult men in our culture typically shave their head, they typically cut their, not shave it, but they cut their hair, right? Uh, young men at one point, traditionally, I think, I'm, I'm sure it's like trends, so it may not, it's probably wasn't that all the time. Um, braiding, keeping their hair long, then when you get married, you tend to keep your hair shorter. So it's just a mature look uh, in their eyes. So I don't mind. Please read my last comments. Okay, go for, I think I missed the comment. Oh, there we go. I really enjoy your children's narration of the video. It was or organic to the topic. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's this guy right here, so... Namdi, um, on your shema, email, or for my my video, I I like the we we e iguai the story my video I, also no ma ma how did ma, cool so <laughs> he went like this. <laughs> uh last yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah so the last topic was in simwa yeah our last group study topic was in simwa which is um intuition so yeah thank you for that uh kofo i hope that was the last comment you were talking about sorry okay i already read that already read this what up family hey what's going on i think i already read that too okay i was on a, qu a hair question so let me go back on the hair speaking of hair what do you make of the concept that some guys kept it for spiritual purposes yeah i mean sure sometimes you'll go to a deviant they'll say hey don't cut your hair <laughs> uh for one reason or another and then you don't you know i don't know i say is power like a person with a person of power the whew, like the power that a person speaks with it is in all things uh some people meditate and gather i say yeah so that's like you can that's like you can right that's like you can go like a it's a uh uh both of a power that manifests in the physical and the spiritual um and you know you can build it up and that kind of thing so yeah it's similar to ikenga so i'll do more um i remember you said there were people who could tell which market day they were born some were harder has it gotten easier for you uh it's not something i thought about too much so no it hasn't gotten easier um, I can just tell the really obvious ones like Urie and um, Eke, but uh, the the Nkwa now falls a little harder uh, for me. So I didn't mind. I give kid in a lie. Gerard, I dalo one ne I ando ando eche frumiti and a Patreon. Um, eche frumiti and a Patreon. Oh, kangwa ni yuzioku. I wouldn't am chef for Ruiti and a Patreon. Oh, na, when be doro. One them wine and one them woke and honey, yum, uh, so boos. Uh, one woke chalk, I'm, I'm G, Giaca, all Legos, yeah. Now, one white chalk, I'm le tablet, yeah, come phone on it, on a May alphabet. So, and with him, and with him, I can eat tea, um, uh, link, yeah, na Patreon. Uh, mana, I know gun, Utswa. So, oh, I said, now, Ugechi, Kara, Ugem Mado. So, oh, Ugechi, 
Can you see it? Yeah. Phone here, yeah, man. We don't want that. Yo, you guys will not believe. I'm I'm speaking specifically about Gerard. Gerard. <laughs> Gerard has no reason to speak Igbo as well as he does. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Maybe I'm mischaracter. I don't know. I'm just going to say I'm not going to gender anybody. Gerard has no reason to speak Igbo as well as Gerard does. But they put their mind to it. And in a very short amount of time, we're we're kicking it back and forth. So we don't want that. You did very well. So, yeah. I'm trying to catch up. What does Dada mean? Dada is dreadlocks. Dada is dreadlocks. And so there are some people that are known as Dada because when they're born, their hair just, that's the natural growth pattern of their hair. I thought my son would be Dada because his hair is really tight. It curls really tight, but I don't think he is. <laughs> Being completely serious, are there leprechauns in Igbo cosmology and Igbo understanding? Yes, yes. Uh, but we don't call, it's not the same leprechaun you don't understand from the Irish. Um, there are the people they know as Omonse or Omoshi or Omonshi. Um, and these people are dwarfs. They are dwarfs. Um, in a lot of West African practices, in the process of becoming a Dibia, they will say that you will enter a certain forest, and in that forest, a dwarf with dreadlocks is going to guide you through the forest and teach you how to be a Debia. That your trainer is going to be a dwarf with dreadlocks, it's going to be spirits, right? And the idea is that these dreadlock dwarfs, these dwarfs with dreadlocks, were the ones who taught the world, our ancestors, um, this particular gift of um that we're calling uh all healing that we're calling spirituality that we're called we we learned it from them they were the first to learn it and they spread it to everybody else these dwarfs with dreadlocks um so if you are a history person you will probably have heard of these stories of people in kemet going to the congo and looking for uh dwarfs or pygmies and that kind of thing um through understanding uh, African spirituality, you'll you'll actually know why, because a lot of uh, like uh, white uh, historians, archaeologists, they think it's like, uh, oh, they thought dwarves had special powers and they were gods, and yeah, it's like that's no, 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 that's not that's not what they were talking about. And so there's even a lot of uh, things spiritually that can only be done by um, dwarves. Uh, because they are the ones who activated it. How undiosu, that kind of thing. And so, oh, undiosu, yeah, let me say. Uh, yeah. So they're the ones that activated the particular thing. And so, um, again, even in, um, if you look at a lot of things like Ofo, Ikenga, and so forth, if you look at how it's built, it's actually depicting a dwarf. That's a dwarf you're looking at. So yeah, we do have leprechauns, but they're not like uh, me, 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 pot of lucky gold uh, leprechauns. Though I don't think the Irish leprechauns were that either. I haven't looked into it, but I'm sure the Irish have a different story than what ends up happening in America, you know, um, or what ends up being the pop culture idea of a leprechaun. It's not uncommon, but yeah, almost see, all over the world, even Thor, even Thor, Thor was a dwarf. <laughs> Thor was a black dwarf, if you guys want to know the truth. Thor was a black dwarf. And they try to say that he's black because of um, uh, metalworking. Right? You'll also wonder why it was so important for Santa Claus to gather all of those dwarfs and make them his slaves. Um, we call them helpers in America, but they're very vocal about it in like uh, the Germanic countries that those are slaves and they're all black, right? Even uh, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Or was it Willy Wonka? Is it the same, that the same thing? I think it's the same thing. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, all of those things, right? So it's a thing, it's real. So Uh, it means locks. It's a hairstyle. Don't know why a lot of Nigerians are adverse to it. I don't. I don't know either. Uh, being completely serious, 
some are adverse to it because of what it's associated with, which is spirituality. I'm doing quotes, spirituality. So, and then others think it's not mature. They don't think it's a mature look, which that, I mean, that's, you know, they have their reasons for saying that. Uh, do, <laughs> I mean, I'll say too much, but they'll see But like, you'll see like a lot of rappers and things, people who don't have a vested interest in appearing mature will have that done. So it's just how that culture sees dreadlocks. Uh, don't it? But yeah, uh, guided time. That was actually a really good question. Uh, don't, okay, don't it may be other West African mythology. Okay, maybe you're answering something from prior. Igbo cosmology mostly focus on energy and matter. Yeah, okay, I doubt it. Okay, yeah. Because I'm up on them now. Are the, Are there any Mao that appear on stilts? Yeah, a lot of them. My favorite, some of my favorites appear on stilts. So, um, Ekeleke, Ekeleke. Um, if you've heard me tell the story of the Chokaloka, <laughs> which is everybody's favorite Igbo word. Uh, if you've heard me tell the story of the Chokaloka, that's what's being depicted by the Ekeleke. It's the same bird. It's the egret. I think it's the either the egret, the ibis, or the uh, crane. I'm not sure which one. Uh, just because I don't know how it translates to English, but yeah, a lot of the, a lot of them are. It's very common for masquerades to be on stilts. It's not uncommon at all. But Ekeleke is one of the main, um, main po the most popular stilt masquerades. So I'll do my, um, my my dad actually played a big role in reviving Ekeleke in my community. This uh, mentally un unbalanced, spiritually unbalanced, uh, just absolute void of a character human being uh that pastor that swept through our community he got kicked out eventually he decided to ban ekeleke and my grandfather on my mother's side was one of the people who helped it survive because when the church first came to the community they were trying to get rid of it and he was one of the people that fought against them getting rid of it but then you know generations passed and the church got rid of it for a period of like 10 years, five years. And my dad was one of the people that reinstalled it. Um, he fought against them and he won and he got it happening again. He sponsored it with his own money and he turned, he made it into like a competition to encourage people to come participate. So he had all the different communities come with their ekeleke and then whoever would win and get this big bundle of stuff. And I remember it, uh, I remember he gave this really good speech about how uh, we should stop fearing our own traditions, right? That, you know, in the West, that. <laughs> in the west they have this thing called and this is exactly how he said it dracula and everybody in the audience goes <gasps> <laughs> and that every year everybody dresses like dracula and runs around getting candy and that kind of thing and god hasn't destroyed them yada 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 that it's not evil it's just culture it's just people enjoying uh the world and human creativity and all that stuff so it was a really cool cool moment memory i remember from back home it was hilarious he was like dracula <laughs> oh, shit. so petri says twa people maybe twa people do they name children in Igbo according to the texture of hair by birth uh no um no I don't, they don't, oh, okay, so the hair you're born with is uh, isi mo. so on your second birthday, of this two years after you're born, it's typically completely cut off and buried, because um, that's the hair you came into, like, that's the hair you brought from ala mo. so you're giving ala mo back what belongs to it, and it's also a sign that the child has decided to stay and to live. Yo, what's going on with hair today? Everybody's asking hair questions, nothing wrong with it, I'm just curious. Um, it's interesting that you guys are all kind of, or a lot of you guys are kind of on the topic, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, so that's, so that's, it doesn't, the, the texture you're born with, it doesn't really matter. Nobody really thinks about that, but we know that that kind of like baby hair is, you see more and it's, it's given back to Allah more. And then your, uh, normal African hair starts coming in after that. So I'll do more. Good question. I hope the traditional medicine class touches on patients who can't sleep. 
Uh, a guy I know literally functions on two hours of light sleep per day, which has affected his health. Doctor tests appear normal. Um, there's there's nothing in the class that specifically talks about that, but that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> While reading Healing Wisdom of Africa by also uh, Maladoma Patrice Somme, and he talks about these types of dwarfs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He experienced them specifically in Burkina Faso. Yes, it's very common. It's very common uh, for somebody at his level. It's very common for somebody at his level of connection and ability and uh, actualization to uh, to experience experience them. So I don't know. Southeast U.S. Indigenous people have stories of little people. Yeah, yeah. A lot of African parents want you to get the level one trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I spent my whole childhood on level one. Trust me, I spent my whole childhood on level one. <laughs> I'm walking on stilts right now. Uh, Gerard, that <laughs> Udo Wande, Udo. Wow, that's interesting. Maybe you can go home and dance ekeleke or o, one of them. Uh, ekeleke, yeah, ekeleke. Is there o that does stilts? Yeah, maybe you can go home and dance uh, ekeleke. <laughs> if you just naturally walk around in your house in stilts. Uh, Gerard, what, what's making you walk in stilts? Uh, or what's, what, why are you choosing to walk? <laughs> that's dope, man. That's really dope. I'm I'm really 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 naturally gifted at stilts. I remember. Hey, what's up? You got back to her. I remember in uh, in uh, elementary we had a stilts portion. Everybody was shocked at how long I can stay. I can just it's very, it doesn't feel like anything. I can walk on them normal. Uh, stilts and pogo stick. I have a freakish level of ability. Uh, natural ability with stilts and pogo sticks. So I'll do my. Uh, <laughs> that's how I'm walking on stilts right now. Why? <laughs> uh, inner child work. Oh, okay, I'll do my. But my ancestors and spirits are guiding me through crafting masks. Wow. Wow. Hey, look into um, Ekeleke. Look into it. Uh, but just look into all. I, if, I don't know if you're interested. Just message me on Patreon or whatever, and I can share some some different masquerades with you. But I think you've probably just intuitively channeled something um, that's in the culture already. So I'll do my. They're surprisingly easy. Wow, we're on to something. Uh, we're on to something. Greetings, my first time today watching your show. Ah, thank you. Um, and I'm a cosmetologist. I'll do my natural hair stylist. I'm enjoying your teaching. Thank you. Uh, Patrice, maybe you have brought the energy and the spirit of hair into the conversation because this has been a very hair-focused conversation we've had today, and I'm grateful for it. Um, it's been interesting. It's been different. Uh, I would definitely want to learn three African languages. Igbo is one of them. Language organizes a person's thoughts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I just don't want to be overwhelmed. Yeah, Darius, uh, Darius, whenever you're ready to join Kadu, we're here for you. Um, so that's such a good thing too, because one of the things we really focus on in Kedu that I don't think other like language programs as far as Igbo goes is that Igbo Bumo, Igbo is a spirit. There's a way of thinking and there's a way of doing when you're, if you're thinking in that, if you're operating in that spirit, right? So, for example, there's no such a thing as speaking Igbo like you're, you don't have confidence. If you don't sound confident when you're speaking Igbo, you're, you're pronouncing things incorrectly. You have to just say things like you mean it, right? You have to say things from your chest, as they say, right? Say it with your chest, boy. That kind of thing. You have to really say things, right? So, we do this thing in the beginning of... Um, uh, it used to just be Igbo 2, but we now do an Igbo 1 and Igbo 2, where people do uh, Iwaji, so we teach people how to do the kola nut prayer that I did in the beginning of the meeting. And part of the beginning is you say Igbo Kwenu. And people go, hey, Igbo Kwenu, hey, Igbo Kwezienu, hey, that kind of thing, right? So you see how I said it? 
some people as an american you're thinking oh that's just his personality he just talks that way that's how you speak the language that's just how you speak the language and the like uh so some people be like Ibo Quenu, Ibo Quenu. No, 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 you're doing wrong. Even if you pronounce it perfectly, if you say, if you don't say it with, you didn't say it correctly, right? And so another thing is like the, the a lot of Kwa languages, a lot of West African languages, you have to sing them. You're like singing them. People will say they are tonal, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, sure. But if you just learn how to sing the language as you're learning it, you know, you'll be fine. You don't have to learn up tone, down tone. It's just... Um, you know, if I say the boy is mine, it's not somebody's gonna, not going to repeat the song by saying the boy is mine. We're not saying the same thing. You have to say the boy is mine. So <laughs> that's how African languages work, right? Um, you sing them. All those things, you come to find that, like when I speak Igbo, there's a way, there's a place my mind is able to go that it typically doesn't go in English. I'm very serious when I speak Igbo and I joke a lot when I'm speaking English. I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Um, and a lot of people that learn different languages will tell you, but they're, the, 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 the spirit is in the language. The spirit is in the language. There's so much our ancestors embedded in the language that as you speak it and live it, a lot starts to come out, right? A lot starts to come out. That's why I always tell people, I mean, it's not just me that says it, it's just what it is. But when you do Iwaji, if you're using Aji, if you're using Alfo, you speak Igbo. You have to speak Igbo because the spirit of that Aji, it's, it's, it's the same spirit you feel when you speak Igbo. The spirit of that awful is the same spirit you feel when you speak evil. It's all one. All devma. So yeah, there's a spirit in languages. Ashe Ashe one. Um, I'm a linguist by training. Kedu Academy is the best platform. Yeah. <laughs> is the best platform I've seen for teaching a non-Indo-European languages. Damn. Okay. All right. Look at that endorsement. Hey, somebody screenshot that comment. Hold on. I'm <laughs> Want to put you on a flyer, <laughs> uh, John? Thank you very much for that. Let me try that one more time without my hand all up in the way. I'm screenshotting that. That's that is an endorsement. No, Gerard, the level, the level that Gerard reached, you uh, that you were able to reach as far as I mean, you have a gift. Obviously, you have a gift. Um, but yo, I I'm very proud of how that all panned out. So yeah. Yo, y'all, come join, come learn Igbo in Kedu. Come join the language class. It's fun, too. I can write. Yeah, yeah. No, your writing is perfect. <laughs> the writing is, yeah, the writing is even stronger. Oh, I haven't heard you speak. Oh, no, I have heard you speak it in class. So, oh, uh, With indigenous languages like Igbo and Yoruba, lying becomes difficult. Yeah, yeah. Which is very easy to do. And so people always tell you it's very hard to lie in Igbo. This is exactly what I was saying. So the the reason, one of the reasons it's hard to lie while you're speaking Igbo is because again, the way you're saying things is as important as what you're saying. So when you say things, there's like an absolute, like in English, it sounds, this sounds like grand. It's like something that you have to work on, but there's just total conviction when you speak, right? There's total conviction when you speak, that kind of thing. And if you're lying, it shakes. It shakes. So all of a sudden you're saying things wrong as you're lying. All of a sudden you're 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 stuttering as you, you start stuttering if you're lying. It's it's a very interesting thing. You start stuttering and it's easy to oh, okay, all right, you know, that kind of thing, right? So you just don't once once somebody wants to start lying to you, they switch to English. I I I promise. <laughs> In Nigeria, once somebody will start lying to you, they start speaking English. In fact, in Nigeria, it's so, it, the, the slang term for you're just trying to pull a fast one is that like, this one is just speaking English. They'll literally say, oh, you're, this one is coming here to speak English. Even if you're speaking Igbo, even if you're speaking Yoruba, they'll say this one's speaking English. And speaking English means this guy's coming to just... <laughs> this guy's coming to, uh, you know, pull a rigmarole, as my white people say. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, are DBS one-stop shops or do they sometimes refer other DBS? Yeah, no, DBS, DBS refer other DBS all the time. Some, you'll go to some DBS and they'll, you know, hear your thing and they'll go to another person for an answer, which is fine. It's normal. Um, they learn from each other all the time. They pick up things from each other. Uh, they have, there's a conference actually in Nigeria where they all go and share like medicines and things like that and 
methodologies. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's interconnected. It's, it's Uwa, Agon, the world of Agon. They belong to the world of Agon. So they, they share amongst each other all the time. It's not uncommon. English language is casting spells. Ah, no, the plot thickens. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Uh, yeah, if you want to lie, speak English. Yeah, yeah, because you can just, you just let the words fly out of your mouth in English. You just say them. You just say them. You don't have to think about them. You don't have to, that kind of thing. Uh, I can slash will write more. You're not balling. You're not balling. <sighs> if there are good ancestors helping us, are there bad ancestors holding you back? Um, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, man. No, no, nothing can, nothing can hold you back. Nothing can hold you back. You are your ancestors in the physical form, right? Uh, so if it's your ancestors holding you back, it's going to look like self-sabotage, I guess. But you're ultimately going to decide whether that self-sabotage becomes reality, becomes how you live, or if something you could overcome. So no, there's no ancestors holding you back. I don't believe that. And the reason I say that is because... Let me put it this way. The... You know, this is a hard question to answer. And uh, the reason it is because of culture. So... If you bury somebody in the ground, you have acknowledged them as a good ancestor. Um, and in my own culture, not everybody traditionally got buried. They they started burying everybody. Um, but as of four years ago, they stopped doing that. They went back to the tradition of not burying everybody, mm -hmm. right? So some people don't get buried. And so in America, culturally, or UK, wherever you're at, just not evil land, everybody gets buried. Uh, so, you know, you now run into a situation where some people have bad ancestors. Uh, but an ancestor is a parent. So if if it's like, a, and perhaps this is my own naivety based off of I, I didn't experience it. If you have, if, if, I guess there are parents that want to hold back their children, right? I guess that's not, un that's not uncommon. That's very common. You stumped me. Good job. So, <laughs> all right. So yeah, there's possibly bad ancestors that hold you back, but ultimately you are the power or you are the gate holder as to whether they are going to have say or not. All an ancestor can do is advise and move things out of your way and that kind of thing, but they're not going to like, uh, they're not like your master. Right? They're a part of you. Right? On them, but like, I I don't know. Do you have? I people ask me these questions all the time. This is why this is a hard one to answer. I get so many questions about like generational curses and bad ancestors that like I sometimes I'm wondering where all this is coming from. Like, why do you think you're cursed? Why do you think you have bad ancestors? That kind of thing. But maybe you know something I don't know, right? Maybe you know something I don't know. So I don't want to. You know, it's hard. Very hard question to answer. You kind of stumped me on that one. On them. Question, John. I wonder. Okay, I missed. I think I missed a few questions. Okay, John. Uh, okay, yeah, no, John, John. Okay, that was a question. Yeah, John, that was a really good question. You got me. Uh, yeah, okay. So people who lie load up their sentences with big words. Um, yeah, and uh, if if you're. <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's true. So, I do my. Do you respect gay people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, could you answer John's question above? I think I just did. Are there DBA conferences across tribal or yeah? So there, the, the one I'm talking about um, that I, I've never been, but I was told about. It's cross ethnic. It's it's just healers. Period. It's just healers. Period. Um, as a DBA you're not really into the con it's not an ethnic thing right so you learn that wisdom can come from everywhere healing can come from anywhere medicine can come from anywhere some deals will recommend uh you go talk to oh this particular pastor knows how to cast and bind go talk to him right it's not they, they're not uh nationalistic 
people. They're just by nature. They're just not. So I don't mind. Uh, there will there be a list of topics that will be covered in your traditional medicine class? I'm interested in channeling. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know where to present that at. Maybe I'll put it on the website. Maybe I'll put it on the website. So yeah, I, I think it's specifically for the traditional medicine class. I think it would be important to like share a curriculum. Now I didn't prioritize. This is not like I'm a, I'm a list maker. Like I'll make a list of things I need to do. And I don't have it on my list. So I'm going to try to remember to put it on my list. If I don't remind me, I don't think it's super necessary. That's why I did. I like, it's not a priority for me, but for some people it might be important. So because it's not a big thing in my head and it might be a big thing for you. Um, if I don't do it, remind me and I'll get it up there. Okay. So let's do this together. Okay. If I say so, definitely feel like there are bad ones annoying me right now. <laughs> I don't think you guys have bad ancestors. I don't, I don't think you have bad. An and then what is a bad ancestor, right? Like if you're father is a bank robber he's still your father it's not like you know what i mean like unless he was robbing you right and that that happens you know so it's hard to say but you know i i don't i don't know i want to know why i get so many questions about like generational curses and bad ancestors uh, so i can give a full answer on this i feel like there's something to it whenever i get a lot of questions about a topic i always you know i'm always curious as to what's the root like what's the tide that's bringing all these questions uh to me and i get bad ancestor and uh generational curse questions a lot um not just on here like messages emails conversations that kind of thing um but yeah i don't i don't know don't trip on that i have ancestors that did egregious things but they're my ancestors so like it's not you know what i mean that's you know what i mean like, like, can you have a bad hand? You know what I mean? <laughs> can you have a bad hand? Can you be like, you know, hey, Derek, what if you have a bad hand? Like, a hand is you, right? If you have a bad ancestor, you're bad. You know? <laughs> if you have a bad ancestor, you're bad. And part of understanding yourself is understanding and, embra and, and, and embracing that bad ancestor. Now, there are ancestors that commit abominations, right? And when an ancestor commits an abomination, they don't become ancestors. You don't become an ancestor after that. But everybody who has become an ancestor, the collective has decided this person is is lives a life worthy of emulation and worthy of continuation and that kind of thing. Right? That this person's chi came into the world and it was a blessing. That's what an ancestor is. And so that's why I'm saying about good ancestor, bad ancestor. Right? But like we we had a phase in my community where everybody got buried, and then we said, "Yeah, that's not working," and they stopped. Um, now, if I started saying who didn't get buried, some of you guys might get mad or like report me to uh, the damn feds. But <laughs> but my community made a very conscious decision to say, "Hey, we can't do this," right? And uh, it ended up, uh, I mean, the problem they were trying to eradicate uh, has decreased significantly. So, Gerard says, Abrahamic trauma. Is that what it is? Is that what it, if you, I'm not accusing anybody here, but if you spent your whole life casting and binding your ancestors, I'm not bound to ancestral curses, well, and then now you want to start talking about your ancestors, do you have a thing inside you that's low-key paranoid and kind of thinks that they're, you know, your ancestors are demonic? If you have bad ancestors, you're bad. This is what I'm trying to tell you. If I have a bad hand that goes around slapping people, I'm bad. I slap people. There's no such, you know what I mean? If you have bad ancestors, you're bad. If your ancestors are trash, you're trash. You understand? A cat doesn't beget a chicken. You understand? It, 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 so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, but I get asked a lot about it. And I'm wondering where it's coming from, right? Is it, is it Abrahamic trauma? I suspect that. You know? It, oh, you know, what about the bad ancestors? What the fuck does that mean? You know? <laughs> What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Bad what? Yeah, like, what do you mean? You know, I don't. <laughs> oh, this one was naughty. He's not a part of my family anymore. Yeah, you are naughty. You can't. You're not. You're not my grandfather anymore. You are a jerk. You are mean to people. Like, 
<laughs> right? <laughs> I guess you do that in America a lot, right? Yeah, you know, that is my dad, but I don't like him, so he's not my dad anymore, you know? <laughs> Which, in my African head, that's wild, but like in America, it's kind of, it's a thing, you know? It's a thing, you know? Oh, he's a deadbeat dad. He's not, you know, my dad no more. You, you know, my dad no more. <laughs> It, as it, you know, I'm I'm very much an American, but there are some things that culturally I haven't adjusted to, um, and, I, and I I've spent most of my life here, and I know this culture like up and down. There are just some things that I've not adjusted to, and one is kids that don't greet elders. <laughs> Like, okay, you're just walking, you, the kid just walk by, he's like, what was that? Right? I have an agenda, that, that's crazy to me. Um, what else? The, the, how people are always grading family members, right? Like, oh, this is a F, this is a D minus mother. You're not my mother anymore. You're not my mother. What do you like? What do you mean, dude? Like, this is not a choice. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Uh oh, they, oh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers that stepped up. Hey, your bum dad is your dad, bro. Like, quit and so. <laughs> what are you saying? Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you get to pick? He's like, a, a, I don't know, man. I just I haven't adjusted that. That's kind of crazy to me, you know? Even if he's the worst person on earth, he's just. Your dad is the worst person. That's still your dad. If it's Father's Day, it's his day. You know what I mean? But I don't, uh, I don't know. I'm probably traumatizing people right now. So let me, uh, they, oh, then, you know, just uh, things like that. Like you say the wrong thing and like people start like <laughs> melting down and shit. <laughs> oh, shit. New group I there are their bad ancestors. Well, that, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a that might be a good discussion for the group study, but it would be a pretty quick discussion. So, but there are some times where I'm coming in with an idea, and the community helps me refine my thinking, or maybe even just turn it a whole different way because what they're saying makes more sense than what I'm saying. Right? We had this conversation, and the question was brought up: Is sand a living thing? And I came in and I said, Well, no. And then as we talked and talked, I was like, wait, shit, it is, right? It is. Um, yeah, so it happens all the time. Maybe I'm going to come in there saying that, hey, you know, your uh, alcoholic grandmother is still your ancestor. It's fine. And then some people are like, no, she's a, she's a F minus grandmother. She's not my grandmother anymore, you know? And then I'll go, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe you'll change my mind, right? So maybe it will be a good discussion. I tend to learn more from the things I don't agree with. It's what I've learned in this journey, or the things that don't make sense to me. So, and that makes it's it's logical, right? If it doesn't make sense to you, if you don't agree with it, you're not going to look at it with a respectful eye, you know. So maybe you guys will help me look at that concept of bad ancestor with a respectful eye. But I kind of suspect it's Abrahamic trauma, right? Like nobody ever asked me, uh, "What if I? What if I have a bad Jesus?" And they're at, you know. You know, that's just, that's crazy. Like, like, what do you, what do you mean? I don't know. What, if, what if I have a bad Abraham? Which if you're a Christian, that's allegedly one of your ancestors, right? God of Abraham, you know, God of my, my forefathers. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but that whole, like, I don't know. Yes, there are bad parents in the west unfortunately no there's bad parents in africa too it's not like it's this that's just normal right i mean even the term bad parents kind of weird man but yeah they're okay let me put it this way so there are bad parents everywhere in the world but i think hey uh, 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 yeah. so there's bad parents all over the world right that's just normal right um a lot of nigerians have a lot of uh trauma from how they were raised that's just something that we kind of all share and not, not all that my parents were cool I, <laughs> I can't relate with y'all that bullshit but <laughs> my parents were cool but a lot of people have a lot of uh, trauma from uh 
from uh, um, how they were raised and um, that kind of thing. But I think one of the one of the one of the things it does, right? So I think one of the reasons that's such a big thing in the West is because in other in a lot of other communities, you live as a community, right? So your the needs you have for a male authority figure or a female authority figure is shared by 150 people and 120 people, right? So if your dad didn't teach you something, your uncle's doing it, your grandfather's doing it, one of your cousins is doing it. If your mother didn't teach you something, same, 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 same. If one of them are particularly negative, there's not as much pressure for them to perform for you. At the same time, I do think Americans are very entitled to being treated well, right? They're <laughs> the You can't convince an American that it's not always important to be treated well. That's not always the most important thing. It's just, it's not going to enter, right? It's not going to enter. It's just not, that's not going to, it's not going to happen. You understand? But in, in American culture, you also can't convince Americans they have a culture. They just think the things they do are just like, it's just humanity. And if you're not doing it, then you have a culture. So in American culture, you can't be, it's, it's, you're, everybody has to treat you well. And it's not like a, that's not a bad thing. That's why it's part of the reason this place functions, right? But everybody has to treat you well, right? So in Nigeria, like if you go to a bus driver and start yelling at him that he's late, he might slap you, right? Because you're yelling, I'm a person, you're yelling at me, what do you mean? You know what I mean? And then you might slap him back and then you guys just, you go sit down on the bus and you go home, right? And it's, it's not even a story, nobody cares, right? But, um, which again, is not, I'm not saying it's a good thing, it's just a different thing, right? Uh, you know, and then, you know, and I don't think the, the pressure, like for example, relationship pressure, right? The, I think one of the things that in, you see in communal societies is that the, pressure there i think there's a lot of pressure in a nuclear family on like let's say a wife because that is a husband's access to women period right there's a lot of pressure on a husband because that is a woman's access to men period you understand and if you guys have a fight or an argument there's really nobody you can go to to be an are, um, I, I say this word wrong a lot, an arbiter to s look at it from the outside and be like, you're the one that's tripping or you're the one that's tripping or you guys need to get past the guy, that kind of thing, right? So you're in this pressure cooker. You guys are all in this pressure cooker. And so then I think you get these ideas of, you know, oh, you know, my, well, I have a C plus dad, you know? <laughs> right? And then like, I don't know, man. I don't know, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just two different cultures, ways of thinking, but I never uh, acclimatized to that thinking because of course in my house, it's still, it's still, uh, it's Igbo. It's not America in my house. When I leave the house, it's America. Inside the house, it's Igbo, right? And so I never got acclimatized to those things. And so, but my friends, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I remember, I remember I, my childhood is dotted with all of these moments of like, culture shock uh, I didn't have a like I didn't know that's what it was at the time but I was just like um it was just like a, okay I just see things differently from this person just because of my culture like I remember one time this guy was telling me that his mom never told him she loved him and my thinking was why did you assume she doesn't right like why does she need to tell you that that's weird you know like what's what's up with you you know, and I, you know, I gave him that very insensitive answer and then that caused some friction, you know. Another one was, another thing in American culture that I never adjusted to is that people are afraid to say no, right? And that, sh that is like the end of, a, like that shit is just like, oh, so you think, like, I don't know, it's like an insult to me. Like, like for example, like if I ask you something and you tell me no, it, it that just means you respect me and you respect the bond between us so much that it's okay. Like, you know, it's, it's good, you know, that kind of thing. But if you think I'm so like, I don't know what the word is for it, but like so unsure of myself that I need everybody to say yes to me, I almost feel like it's like you're condescending to me. So I used to be like, hey, you guys want to do blah, 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 blah. And everybody be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like day of, people start, 
oh, this happened. Oh, that happened. It's like, dude, you should have just said no. Like, I don't, like, and I, and I used to tell people, like, hey, please. Like, I got to the point where I started saying, like, if you want to say no, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'll still be your friend. Just say no, you know? And uh, that, <laughs> that didn't work either. So, yeah, in American culture, you don't say no to people because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, yeah, but back home, like, sometimes uh, you'll, like, I remember I told this girl, hey, your hair looks really nice. She goes, no, it doesn't. I was like, okay. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> but I was still thinking American. Like, oh, she did something different with her hair. I should say something nice so she can feel good. But it's like, hey, I don't need you to feel good. Make me feel good, one. And it doesn't look good. I know it looks bad. Stop. You know? Hey, what's up? I'm getting... No. No, you're not going to do that. You gotta borrow a different one. Uh, yeah, no, don't uh, hit yeah, consent. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but which one do I press? Back. Back. This one? Mba. Which okay, one? press that one. Okay. No, no. Just bang your, yeah? Turn the thing off and then turn it back on if it's not good. I, I, I think it's this one. No, that will give them your information. Don't do that. Bang your, yeah? Turn it off and then turn it back on. Just restart. I don't mind. Man, that's good. You may feel cursed if your ancestors are trying to steer you one way and you want to go another. I was warned in dreams several times. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Your ancestors are parental guides. They're like, um, it's hard to even go there. They're, they're elders. They're your, they're, they can see things you can't, right? They can see things you can't. There's an ilu that says an elder can see what an elder can see while sitting. A child can't see while standing. And that is really what ancestral guidance is. So if you're being pulled in, in one direction, hey, you're having these dreams, hey, look over here, look, and you don't want to look over there. That's you. That's your ass, you know. <laughs> right? That's your ass. You ask your ancestors for answers, they give you an answer, you don't want to do it. Then after a while, I mean, just think of it logically. I'm not, hey, it's, this is, person comes to me one more time, I swear, you know, like I'm not going to answer nothing for them. That kind of thing. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's a curse. Most of the things that are good for you, you're not going to want to do, right? You're not, you don't, you're not going to naturally want to eat healthy. You're not going to naturally want to exercise. You're not going to naturally want to do these things. There's a push. It hurts a little bit to do, right? Everything you don't like in your life is rooted in your life because it has there. it's attached to something you do like, right? Still doing the same then I'm not even, then just play a different game. Play, no, no, turn it off all the way and play it again. So there's everything in your life that you don't like is rooted to something you do like, right? So like, you look at it like a tree. A tree grows in two directions. One direction grows uh, towards gravity. The other one grows away from gravity. And in order, if you cut just the top of the tree, the roots are still there and they're still growing and they're still in there. They're still embedded. And if you give it time, that thing will start coming back up again. So oftentimes what sacrifice is, is losing something that you actually value or want or like. And oftentimes it is attached to something that you don't want and don't like. So if your ancestors are saying, hey, take a left and you don't want to take a left, but you, there's something you want in life, like oh, I wanna, I don't know, I wanna finish, uh, I wanna finish that online degree this year, right? You may need to turn left. And the reason you haven't finished is because you haven't turned left, and it hurts to turn left, right? It doesn't, you don't, you don't know what's over there. Maybe you see a bunch of glass on the road, that kind of thing. But yo, that's that's what you need to do to get that thing you want to get. And that's not a curse, but it, I mean, I don't know if, if doing something you don't want to do feels like a curse, then sure. Affirmation videos when? Oh, good question. It's coming. It's coming. Traditional Congolese distinguish between ancestors uh, and those who are bad, bad spirits. I forget the exact terms. Yeah, so at home, like traditionally, a person who's committed abominations and hasn't atoned for them, um, hasn't atoned for them or hasn't cleansed the land and cleansed themselves of the abomination, 
um, they're not buried. And because they're not buried, they remain in the Androfia, the evil forest, right? Um, and uh, they come out once a year during like masquerade festivals. Uh, this will be the time of the year they typically tell uh, women, you know, don't watch masquerades or don't look at that particular masquerade, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they stay in the Okento or the Androfia and that kind of thing. So yeah, there is an acknowledgement of it. But like, if you buried the person, that's that's what that is. You're you're making them an ancestor. I think this concept is the source of the questions. Okay, maybe I lost track of what you meant there. I feel a lot of people don't want to take any accountability to failures in their life. These people, not all people, shift accountability to ancestors or bad spirits like boogeymen, etc. Oh, the plot thickens. <laughs> the plot thickens. Being old doesn't mean you're an elder. Being dead doesn't make you an ancestor. Very well said. Very well said. Uh, better question is, what are our rules for becoming an ancestor today? There you go. Uh, where's the line drawn? That's so, so one of the things too we have to be careful of is if we are personally drawing the line and it's not a community thing, we're young people. Most of the people talking to me right now, we're young, right? We don't know anything, right? <laughs> We don't, we think we know things. And then as we get older, we realize, okay, you know, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't understand that at the time. Oh, that looks like very toxic behavior at that time. But now I know it is blah, blah, blah. Oh, I thought, you know, so-and-so did that because they're a bad ancestor, but X, Y, Z happened to them and now I understand and empathize with it or they have something in them that I also have in me. And so we're, we're one of the reasons these things get, you can't, okay, so like, let's say some, we were to decide who's a good ancestor, who's a bad ancestor. It would have to be done communally. It can't, be, it can't one person does not have enough perspective to make a character judgment, right? It's impossible, right? And so, and then it's not a character judgment thing. It's not like a, good ancestor but it's just your ancestors that's who you if one of your ancestors was just going around who's that guy that's punching everybody in new york marcus marcus garvey's grandson that's going around punching people in new york <laughs> uh, punching white women in new york right i don't know if what if that was one of your ancestors i mean like you sit down with him long enough you'll understand where he's coming from right so again you know it's 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 hard because what, what we'll start doing is doing what we do in America with like parents and family members and relationships where everybody's getting graded all the time. Everybody's getting graded. Oh, this is a, a oh yeah, this is a A plus boyfriend. This is a C plus girlfriend. This is a, you know, uh -huh. all this great. And it, that's, look, if, if you have a, an ancestor that was going around punching white women in New York and you say, that's not a good ancestor, that's not my ancestor, then all of a sudden one day, Whatever the hell hit him hits you, hey. <laughs> this is about understanding yourself. Like I was saying earlier with the Debian thing, this is about understanding yourself. So there's something in this guy that goes around punching white women. In a previous generation, it made him want to unite black people across the world. It made him want Africans to be decolonized. It made him want the African diaspora to know themselves and know their history and know their future. And it made them him say, we need to start communities that are independent of malicious colonial control and uh, industry and all these, it, you know, Marcus Garvey, right? That's, that's one of this guy's, but in this lifetime, it just made him want to punch white women. You know? <laughs> So again, it's not good. We don't have enough perspective to say who is good, who is not. Don't waste your time doing that. Because it's not that you're saying well, this is good ancestor, this is bad. A, are you going to be able to fully accept yourself if you can't accept what you come from? Right? Even if it's bad. You understand? Even if it's bad. It's a form of self-hatred. Ah, oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. There's something I'm seeing inside of it 
that I don't have a fully developed way of, of, of discussing, right? The, the language tool is not quite yet developed for grasping what it is. But I feel that I'm being asked that question a lot for a reason that I don't 100% um, think is healthy, right? So yeah, okay, I had an ancestor that used to that used to beat his wife. Hey, you got some wife beater in you. You got it's in you. It's in you. That's what that means. It means it's in you. Okay. What's the, who is that person? What's his story? Why how did he get to that point? Okay. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Okay. I'm going to not do that because I got that in me, right? I got I get I got raise my voice in me, right? Now, one day, we're going to become so morally enlightened at the age of like 13 and 14, which is what typically happens in this country, that we're going to decide, you know what? It is negative and bad to yell and raise your... It is negative and bad, and I denounce all my ancestors that did that shit, and I'm just going to go through life like, mm, having all that in me and not knowing why, right? So it's not really a... I don't know. It's not really a good ancestor or bad... I mean, what is, what is a good person... What is a bad person? What does that even mean? What does a bad person have in them that you don't have in you? What's the difference? Right? Oh, that's the that's a good person. I thought P. Diddy was a good person. <laughs> I thought he was cool as hell, right? <laughs> I remember I was, I was like in middle school and I was like, I was like, man, is that what I got to do to be cool, man? That's, that seems like a lot of work, but P, you know, get this money, take this money. I was like, okay, that's a cool, ta-da, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know the story, but I'm just saying like, nobody's equipped to know who a good person or a bad person even is, right? You don't know that. Okay. So in that scale of good person, bad person, where are you at? And why are you always conveniently at good? Does everybody agree? And is it something that is just existential to you or you just kind of, you know, make some kind of, uh, you just decided that's the more comfortable place to be, right? I don't know. It's just, I think it takes a lot more thought, but I don't really like get into the whole good ancestor, bad ancestor thing. There are some ancestors that commit our, what's called our abominations. And it's not that they're good or bad. They could have committed a violation against the earth and we cannot put this guy back in the earth. We cannot put this uh, woman back in the earth because of what they did, right? I can't do that. I can't replant this seed. It's just what it is. I can't do that. But it's, they violated the earth. It's not that we thought this guy was a, like a, a, a jerk. You know, I think that's very individualistic thinking too. Because if you're living communally, a hey, ninety-nine percent of people are gonna piss you off. It's just what it is. It's not. It's not like people live communally. That's why, like, uh, that's why anytime like Westerners try communism, they end up killing everybody. Because <laughs> they don't have the concept of community in them, and they're trying to like ideology their way into it. But they haven't. In, they still have those like judge the the the, the hu grading human mentality grading oh this is the superior species this is the inferior this is the good ancestors this is the bad ancestors. we gotta we gotta get rid of the good man that shit's that's just a bunch of bullshit what is a good person right what is that that's not real that's not real when you figure out that most of what you think is your personality is 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 probably more connected to to your lack of magnesium and your lack of zinc than anything that you chose, then yeah, you'll you'll really start questioning what the hell a good person is. You know, you're not in control of that shit. The chosen family, a foreign concept to most African. Yes, the chosen. There's no such a thing as a chosen. That's how you guys end up in these damn cults. <laughs> That's how you guys end up in these these dumbass cults. You understand? Oh, I have a new. This is my new father. This is my new father. Hey, oh yeah, he wants me to drink the Kool-Aid. Like, come on, man. Like <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing like a chosen family. It's your damn family. You can have friends, you can have groups, um, or groups you belong to, that kind of thing. That's fine, but your family is your family. Regardless of where they are in your little grading scale. Right? It's your family. Okay. Oh well, everybody in my family is uh um abusive okay yeah that's just that's your family it doesn't matter that's like oh my 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 left femur is abusive what does that even mean your family you are too you're the same people 
Uh, are there maybe I let me get off this topic of <laughs> I'm speedy. Uh there <laughs> Uh, there are mediums who say that some folks don't transition correctly and become malevolent spirits. I'm not sure. Um, until there are some resolution. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me not be dismissive. Um, and so that could be where the idea of bad answers has come from. Yeah, but it's not like, that's like, you know when you're locked out of a house and you're like, hey, you start knocking, you're trying to wake people up, you start hitting the window, hey, hey, because you can't get in the house anymore, the knocking doesn't work, so maybe you climb something, you start hitting a window, that's what that is, that's not a bad spirit, it's just do, has to, has to get your attention somehow, some way, right, so it's not that they're bad, it's just have to get your attention somehow, some way, now they may have ended up in that situation more than likely, because they messed up in life, this happens a lot, right, this happens a lot, happens a lot, because they messed up in life, they end up in that situation, but it doesn't mean that they're like, it's just like they got this stamp called evil in their head. There's a problem. You fix the problem, everybody moves on. The bypassing happens. Right? That kind of thing. A, nobody ever says, oh, what if I have a bad virgin Mary? You know what I mean? Uh, oh, you got a bad virgin Mary? No, all the, all the Abrahamic characters are always like holistically solid, and then everything else is up for grabs. Come on, man. <laughs> American South, American North, a female, female at birth, stillborn, or a dead baby. That baby would be marked in the face oh, or somewhere before burial. Now, if she got pregnant again, we would see that mark. Wow. Yeah, that's an Igbo tradition. Wow. Um, let me not say Igbo. I'm sure other West Africans do it, but we do the same thing at home, Darius. Um, yeah, so stillborn, mark the stillborn, bury, and that kind of thing. Yeah, no, we do that same, same thing, but they don't, they don't bury, they don't bury. But, um, yeah, they do the same thing at home. Thank you for that. That was dope. Uh, okay. Precisely that. Uh, what do you make of the concept of food of the gods or superfoods that tend to be nutrient dense in general, aka mushrooms? Thing? Uh, I think every food is a food of the gods. Because if something isn't the food of the gods, what is it a food of, right? What else is it a food of, right? Uh, but yeah, no, there's yeah, there's a lot of nutrient dense foods, and they're very convenient for helping you hit your uh, metabolic needs in a convenient way. So I started this thing in the past few days where I looked up what are all of the rec like the minerals and vitamins a person has to take on a daily. And I started making a juice. It's like a ton of juice too. Like it's like you got to eat way too much stuff. But then sometimes you find those superfoods that has a whole bunch of those things in one, so you don't have to drink like five cups of juice. You can just drink like two. What's up? Yeah, I'll do more. So you don't have to drink like one thing of juice. You can drink just one, and that kind of thing. So that's convenient. But um, yeah, I'll do more. All foods are from the gods. Uh, spend a lifetime calling on the God Abraham Isaac, ignoring the gods of Chigos. Yeah, I rebuke in the name of, and the God of Deshaun will rebuke you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true, it's true. Yeah, you know, uh, you would see, I may be going back. Yo, Darius, that was dope, man. Thank you for sharing that. American and black American culture are not the same thing. Uh, this is what Gofo says, Chi Chi. Uh, Chick Chi says, uh, oh, let's not take your attention. It's late. Babies have to rest. Yeah, it is getting late and I, it's bedtime late too. So let's see if we got from the mission. C plus dad is all the, all the time. Oh, uh, happy Father's Day to the dads that, and then it's just this list of things that's like convenient for children and women. It's like, okay, what about the dads that found their own personal uh, 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 happiness and, 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 and took a, a vacation to go do that thing. Yeah. Does he get, no, he's not going to get congratulated for that. Right. That kind of thing. It's always, anytime they show a good dad, he's always just hovering over some kid. You know? <laughs> like a good dad's never just, just living his life, doing his own, he's just hovering over some kid and, you know, he's the kid's brushing his teeth, the dad's like, oh, what a good dad. Like, Come on, man. That's the, and then, like, it is how America works. In 15 years, they just decide, oh, that was a bad idea, and then they just drop all that. And all these people that made it their personalities, they all have to do this very weird pivot, or they have to just 
fade into oblivion with it, right? So I don't, you know, it's just one of the things you learn. You don't take uh you don't take all these little notions in this particular country serious because it's not that deep. People are just throwing their ideas to the wall and trying to market it and some work better than the other. And then like in 10 years they just throw it all in the trash and they start all over, right? That kind of thing. Thanks, I'll look into it. Somebody's message got retracted. You need to chill out, whoever that is. Uh, or maybe you don't, maybe it's a glitch. Uh, so you acknowledge your ancestors. So you acknowledge your ancestors and if you're not part of the culture, you can offer food, water. If you don't offer, yeah, yeah. So you you offer what you're partaking in. So if you're drinking a little water, you pour a little water and acknowledgement. If you're eating a little food, you offer a little food and acknowledgement. Now, what you'll come to find is that, like, for example, I don't typically take alcohol to my altar because one of my ancestors didn't drink. He did not drink. He would not drink. Um, I don't, some people will take cigar, blow cigar, that kind of thing. I think, I think it's really big in, like, the Cubans. Um I don't do that when none of my ancestors smoked and one of them was very adamant about not smoking. And you see all those things, you know, and, you know, that becomes a guide for you, right? So if my ancestor wouldn't eat this thing or wouldn't drink this thing, maybe I should chill out on it. Because as I'm going through life, right, I'm learning what works for me and what doesn't work for me, like eating wise, drinking wise, behavior wise, and then I will be known for those things and then I pass and my own children, right? Well, hey, there's a reason he stopped doing that, right? Like me, I don't, uh, I avoid gluten. You see this here? This is not natural. It started out as a little dot and it kept spreading and spreading and spreading. And it just spreads as like an itch. I'd itch myself, I'd itch and then it, I'd go, and it should go away after a while and then it, um, something else will happen and it pops up, it pops up. I found out it was from eating cheap bread, gluten, right? So I don't eat cheap bread. I don't really don't eat bread anymore. You know, sometimes there's the inevitable, it's okay, it's just a part of the pizza, which I don't really eat pizza anymore either. Um, but I avoid bread now, you know? And so, you, you know, I become an ancestor. Hey, I don't take bread to my altar because my ancestors didn't eat bread. And then you start eating the bread and all of a sudden your arm starts... <laughs> So it's not about, oh, well, that was a bad ancestor. No, it's, I, that's you. <laughs> In the previous life, you figured out that your blood does not agree with bread. And then this person gave you that blood by way of birth and genetics. And now you're eating the bread, talking about you got bad ancestors. And then you're breaking out this, your whole, you know, that kind of thing. I stopped this before it got to my elbow, right? But it's all gluten allergy, I think, right there, right? People think it's hair. <laughs> this is my other arm, right? That kind of thing, so... Yeah, so what's up? I eat bread. You eat bread? Yes. When you turn 26, you may not want to eat it. Okay. When I turned 26, it started happening to me. But before then, I used to eat bread all the time. But I didn't know until I turned like maybe 33 that it was because of bread. So the whole time, I was just itching myself eating peanut butter sandwiches. Oh. Yeah. It happens. In the, when in when you were my grandpa, you didn't drink alcohol and you didn't smoke. So. so yeah, but yeah, the, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so all those things are wisdom because that's you from a previous life, right? That kind of thing. I don't know. Lack of community in Black America is the issue in deciding who is what. Um, creative force, you know, I can't really talk too much about Black American culture. I do think the amount of community in Black American culture gets underrated. You know, yeah, I think it gets underrated. And I feel like you guys get this from us, but there's a way that Black people everywhere kind of talk really negative about their situation. And then you go there and you realize that's not really what's going on. It's just how these people talk, right? Like you can go to some Nigerians like, hey, you know, I want to go to Nigeria. Oh, no, they'll kidnap you. Like just, <laughs> but then like you'll go on TikTok. Oh, man, if you come, you come to Miami, they'll shoot you. 
oh, you come to Chicago, they'll shoot you. If you come, they're trying to do Toronto now. Uh, the Crody guy, oh, Crody, if you come to Sh Toronto, they'll shoot you. If you come to Jamaica, they'll shoot you. If you come to Haiti, they'll shoot Man, no, they won't. <laughs> no, they won't. What is this? What is this? But we do it at home too. Oh, the, don't go to Nigeria, they'll kidnap you. These are, it's a, I think it's a genetic thing. It's one of the things, um, it's a pet peeve of mine, right? You ask a, a, a Negro, <laughs> you ask them where they're from and, and if you should, they start telling you about who got shot and who got stabbed. Like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, you know, oh, don't come to New York, man. Don't come to the safest metropolitan center probably in the Western hemisphere. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? That very safe place that has international guests coming in and out every single day. Are you sure I'm going to be hurt if I go there? I mean, shit, you know, you can get, if someone wants to kill you, you're dead. There's no, it doesn't matter where you're at. P. Diddy has, P. Diddy has Diddy in the name. We have to Hey, man, I thought he was cool as hell growing up, man, right? I thought he was cool as hell, you know, that kind of thing. Uh... I don't know. Thoughts on transgenderism? I've never tried it. Uh, what is witchcraft called in Igbo? Uh, how to defend against it? So witchcraft is uh, amosu. Amosu is the word for witch. Um, how to defend against it? So the most common, easiest way is to keep your awful. Stay within your awful. What is staying within your awful? Your chi created you with a certain set of principles that you are supposed to live by throughout life you are learning and figuring out what these principles are but typically there are things that you will do and then immediately after you'll see disaster right like that's how you know oh don't do that right um a lot of people when they fight people they they're gonna spend the next however long just feeling absolute dread and guilt absolute dread and guilt until they reconcile the situation some people seek conflict perpetually and that's their comfort zone so for the person who feels that dread and guilt part of their all falls that you're not supposed to be fighting people right you're not supposed to be fighting people there are some people who um even i'll take it into the into health right i'm not supposed to be eating gluten i don't even know what the hell gluten is i'm not supposed to be eating it that happens right i'm not supposed to be eating that right? that's part of my all fall i eat that gluten this happens my teeth feel funny all that stuff right um, back to the moral behavioral stuff. Uh, some people can steal with impunity and then you go steal and, you know, you get into six car accidents, right? <laughs> so the, the, you pay attention to those things in life. You pay attention to what immoral behavior you committed before you saw the disaster and understand that that's a wall you just ran into a wall that you were specifically not supposed to run into you're all full it's not going to be the same as somebody else's but if you keep your awful if you're within as the muslims say if you're keeping deen right which is that's what it is right if you're if you're staying to your spiritual principle there's nothing anybody can do to you you have to step I said somebody had referenced this earlier. You have to step outside of your spiritual house before some mm. the rain can touch your head. No, we can't do that mm. right now. You have to step outside of your house before the rain can touch your head. Okay? Namdi. Mm. So you have to step outside of your house. Once you step outside of your house, if if people are trying to do things to you. You hunger? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay. Um, and we're at pizza. You try to eat pizza. Uh, no. I think I want to eat something. Like a little bag because I couldn't like super, super hungry. You're super hungry? Okay, let me let me close this then, okay? All right. So. Can I wait for you? Sure. Right, come wait. Come on. So, yeah. The, what was I going to say? So, yeah. In order for the rain to hit the top of your head, you have to step outside of your house. So. Um, people can do whatever they want to you. You have to step outside the house for the thing to happen. Um, you'll notice, how am I going to say this? These are things we know subconsciously. And you'll notice that whenever, in when we tell stories, 
we always write these villains, right, that share what they're about to do to you, right? All right, Batman, I got you tied to the train tracks. And within three minutes, the train's going to come unless somebody pulls the red, the the right wire and whoop, 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 right? You get these things over and over. You get these parts that you get uh, Dan Schneider, right? He's showing you the feet logo. He's having the kids do the things on TV so you can agree with it and that kind of thing. You need to step outside. You're all fall for his, his, his guru to, uh, to, to work, right? So oftentimes the way, let's call it witchcraft works, is you have to step outside of yourself for it to get you, right? And when we write stories, we put that in there subconsciously or consciously. We get, put that in there. Oh, yeah, Samson, God says, Samson, don't cut your hair. Samson cuts his hair and dude fucks up, right? <laughs> That's all I know about this story. I know like, like some rubble fell on him and he, he cut his hair for some, uh, some female, as they say, on the red pill side, right? Um, but yeah, you know, you have to step outside of yourself in order for juju to work. So if you're within your principles, you're fine. That's why when you do ego fall, what you do is ego fall is similar to what I just did earlier with Corona in the beginning. But ego fall is you are saying all the things you have not done, right? So I have not harmed another. I have not taken what does not belong to me. My hands are clean. My feet are clean. I have not gone in a place that desecrates my chi. I have not done all these things. As you grow in life, you start learning more things you should say and keep to. And ego fall is almost like you're keeping yourself, you're, you're, you're showing that I'm still worthy of holding this all fall because this, 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 and that. I always reference, whenever I talk about ego all fall, I always talk about the 48 laws of, I think it's 48, 48 laws of Ma'at. So they went to Kemet and somebody wrote a bunch of those things on the wall. I have not done this. I have not done this. I have not done this. I have not done that. That's what he was doing. Ego all fall or ego, ego onk. I don't know. I don't know how they put it in their own. Ego onk. Our own is awful. Their own is onk. I think it's probably onku, honestly, or onko, right? I actually think it was onko or onku. I don't think it was onk, but that's a whole different thing. So that's what that is. If, you, if you're interested, look at the 48 laws of Ma'at and uh, try to keep that. Use that as a basis. Now, because you don't 100% know what your laws are, whatever you think is wrong in the world, don't commit that. And go to your awful and be proudly say, I have not done that thing to reaffirm and re-strengthen yourself. And that's all it is. And then, and then witchcraft, that's the that's something kids worry about. You don't have to worry. Kids and Christians. So. <laughs> Every DB I ever talked to said that <laughs> most of the people I come to them about witchcraft is Christians. So yeah, I don't know. Uh so say if uh, someone in the family passes away, they can stick around to cause problems if their spirit is not at peace. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, they can. So in that aspect, some ancestors can cause problems, correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, you're absolutely right, but it's like, uh, hey, there's a, that's, that's the problem. And then all of a sudden you wake up, it's like, ah, some, something's waking me up. Now, you can think there's a problem with your window and say, oh, my window's that. For some reason, last night, somebody was something was making noise on my window and I gotta get windows that don't make sound. So I don't have that problem. Well, okay, through the window, okay, I'm going to start throwing rocks at the door. I'm going to throw rocks at the door. I'm going to do whatever it is to wake this person up so they can help me get over on the other side, right? That happens, right? That is common. It's normal. It happens. But it doesn't make that particular ancestor bad. It doesn't make that family member who you accidentally locked out the house bad or accidentally locked themselves out of the house bad or came home at the wrong time bad. They're not bad. They're just in a situation, right? They're in a situation. Maybe they're in a situation because they people do bad things and do good things, but I don't think people are good or bad, right? You're just an organism, you know. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So, Adema. what do you look for in a man? <laughs> That's a funny question. I, I I look for I look for look for guys like you, Jake. Uh, do you love Jesus? I have never met him. Do you love Cher? Cher was, Cher was surprisingly attractive as a young, <laughs> I always knew her as an older woman, right? I grew up during a, a do you believe in love? You know, that kind of thing. I grew up in that era. So I was like, okay, you know, and I was like, damn, she was very stunning as a, as a younger, um, woman. 
uh, and that kind of thing. But I, I don't know her. I just I just see her. Mm, I can't love her. I don't know her. Uh, change bread for plantain or bread fruit. Yeah. So I just I just don't eat bread stuff. That's that's good advice. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't really like plantain that much either. Uh, but um, I I eat a lot more yam now. I eat a lot more. I just eat a lot more traditional food by nature, just naturally. And then I have like, you know, of course, my vitamin juice that I've been drinking lately, but I'm sure I'll get past that phase sometime. Uh, but I just eat more traditionally now. I don't really get into like too many. I can, if if I were to eat bread, it couldn't be like that sliced white bread from the store. That sh that'll kill, oh, I'll tear me up. That kind of thing. Okay, so thank you. Your head is like jewelry. Alcohol doesn't spoil. Put it in the desert, it'll grow. It's a real nigga, niggas. Wait, real nigga, niggas ain't kill you unless you get out of line. Yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? You so somebody just sitting at the airport waiting for me, just doing this, waiting for me to get to, to Chicago. Just, man, come on with that. But talking about, oh, they're going to kidnap. I mean, if you get kidnapped or shot, okay, you're dead. You know what I mean? But, you know, you guys can't, you got to get it past that afraid of, yeah, I guess past that fear thing, you know? But yeah, I don't, everywhere you ask a, a black person about any geographical location they're associated with, start telling you about whose car got stolen. Like, <laughs> okay. And it's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm Nigerian. I'm not black American. You know what I mean? And so I'm hearing these things. Like I remember when I was trying, I was young, I'm in Nebraska and it's just me and a bunch of mulattoes and <laughs> they didn't know anything about HBCUs, and so I was trying to research HBCUs, and just everything I was seeing was just, oh, they don't even got computers, they're underfunded, the degree doesn't count, everything I was seeing was just off the wall, and then it, it didn't, it, it, and then I, I didn't realize that I was, that was just a bunch of talk until I moved to Texas, and I actually saw HBCUs, and I was like, oh, We, we need more schools. We need more schools. And we need our own universities. Let's forget that we have 102. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and then Nigerians, we do the same thing. We do the same thing. We don't have this. We don't have, the, like, you literally have that thing. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it is. I think it's a gene. I think it's genetic. Jamaicans do it. Haitians do it. Black British people do it. You know, I'm sure they're doing it in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> I'm sure black Brazilians do it. And I'm not saying our situation's ideal, but sometimes we overdose on the negative talk. You know, yeah, we, need to, we need to build our own cities. Yo, I mean, you've got a couple, actually. You've built a couple. You've built a couple. And they're great. Right? So I got to hurry up and get back to Houston, man. I remember one election. They showed all the judges that won it. It was just a whole bunch of black women. And I felt this. I was like, oh. <laughs> it felt good. Oh, I was like, oh, that was great. But if I weren't in Houston, I'd be hearing all this internet. We need our own judges. We, you know, the judge is always white. The judge is always, well, they're not. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, you know it's not like I'm talking as an outsider. You know you're not telling the truth. You know these things better than I do. Why are you talking like this? You know what I mean? Again, go to Nigeria, we do the exact same thing. We do the exact same. Oh, all our politicians are corrupt. All our politicians are corrupt. All of them are corrupt. We've been saying that for how old is that zoo of a <laughs> I was saying that for uh, over 50 years. And when we first started saying it was with Tafawa Balewa, uh, Namdi Azikiwe, and Awolowo. I think Awolowo was probably stealing money. He was a guy, man, you know. But you go back now and, like, Azikiwe died in, like, a normal kind of middle-class house. Tafawa Balewa did, died. He didn't own any shoes. He's the first president in Nigeria. But they were shot by people accusing them of corruption. And then... 
if we keep like it's, it's a self manifesting thing. So if you keep saying these ones are good, so you you have a whole jet like you they they get killed, and there's a coup, and the coups the people say, oh, we did it because they were corrupt. And the next coup, oh, we killed them because they were corrupt. Next coup, we threw them over because they were corrupt. After a while, you know, you're growing up hearing this. So you go to the government, you get you get to steal. You go to the government, you get to steal. You now raise an entire generation that says government equals stealing. And now you now the corrupt now it's real. Now you have the corruption. Okay, now it's real. You were accusing the guy that died with no shoes, doesn't own a pair of shoes. You accused him of stealing money, and he died because of that accusation. And you kept saying, kept saying, saying. So I'm growing up 40, 50 years of hearing this. Wait till I get in the government. Well, these past, they, I mean, shit, they were stealing billions. What, what is it, what is it gonna, is it gonna hurt if I steal like, I don't know, a couple 20 million, 40 million? No. So yeah, it's like, it's just, I don't know what fuck you do that bullshit for, man. It's stupid. But yeah. We don't play, we are this American culture. Absolutely. LMAO, one may as well ask about transspeciesism or transhumanism. Yeah, store bought cola is good. It just doesn't stay long. Yeah, yeah, cola, you got it. If you put it in water, it'll, it comes back to life. So this one is really hard. But if I put it in water it, and give it like a few hours, it just goes back to normal. So the way you avoided the transgender question, someone asked earlier. Um, bro said, I never tried it. <laughs> yeah, every time, every, every, let me say every third time I go live, somebody will ask me about uh sexuality which i don't i don't know about you guys yeah you guys that that conversation's everywhere man it just it doesn't have to be everywhere and i've answered it a lot too i've answered it a lot but i've never tried it so i can't really speak too much on it well, or mad um as they're oh, okay so they have the same thing in senegal okay dope 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 yeah maybe maybe they kill you unless yeah Talk about, oh, if you go to fucking, you know, when I knew we had a problem, I live in the middle of, this is the most like, this is the least dangerous imaginable geographic location imaginable. And I had a, a barber who was a friend. He saw me walking and he's like, hey, you need a ride? And I'm like, sure. And I hopped in the car and, uh, you know, we're talking and he's like, man, you got to be careful walking around here and if you guys knew where i was at it'd just be like you'd start laughing right and i'm like why should i be careful at this point i was already getting tired of this because i'm seeing these people talk about oh don't come to toronto you know what i mean so i'm like okay why should i think he's like oh it's not the way it used to be man it's changing man and he's like that he he's at he goes to this like uh the city council meetings he gets consulted or something like that i'm like bro no dude just stop that bro. just just shut up <laughs> Why do I go? Just shut up, dude. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You gotta be careful. But if you knew where I was at, man, just just think of the last place anybody would ever do anything to another person. It's 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 worse than that. Right? It's worse more of that than what you're imagining, right? Oh man, don't come to Toronto. Don't come to all these very celebrated tourist cities. With massive black populations that no, nobody's bothering. Yeah. What state are you in? I'm going to chill on the giving the geography, but I'm sure someone can find it out if they want to. What's up? Okay, I'm, I'm done, done. Let me stop. All right, guys, we got to wrap this up. My son's hungry. Um, <laughs> learning never ends. You want rice? Yeah, everybody's hungry. Okay, guys. Uno gade, uno geto. Nko obola unu uti yaka o gade no wa. O gade o tuwa. Neke. Nuriye. Na fo. Na unkwo. He said... All right, guys. You guys, this has been fun. Take care.